So I'm really glad uh, that I uh, have an opportunity to welcome you all here on behalf of the uh, Joint Secretariat and Managing Authority of Interreg Italy Croatia program. Uh, I welcome you on site and our participants online. And I am uh, sure you we will have an interesting day today and uh, we will present you our results of strateg strategic projects. Uh, we have also our guests here who will welcome you uh, also, and I would like to invite them. So, first of all, we have uh, our host, <laughs> the University of Ferrara, Ms. Mrs. Evelina uh, Lama, will greet you all. Good, Good morning. Dear all, uh, it's a great pleasure and an honor for me to, to bring you the welcome greetings of our magnificent rector, uh, Professor Laura Ramacciotti, who apologizes for not uh, being here today due to previous commitments, academic commitments. I would like first to thank uh, uh, the Interreg Italy Croatia Managing Authority for having chosen uh, our university as a hosting place for this important event. And I also thanks all the authorities, regional, national, and European for being here today. This will be an opportunity not only to present the results of past projects, but also to establish new relationships and um, find themes for future calls and projects. So I really wish you a good uh, and fruitful uh, work today in uh, this uh, building. And have a nice day today. Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Lama. Uh, our next uh, guest is uh, Mr. Paolo Calvano, uh, who is a councillor of Emilia-Romagna region. He will join us online. Uh, Mr. Calvano, can you hear us? Good morning, dear ladies and uh, gentlemen. It is my pleasure to greet you on uh, behalf of the Emilia-Romagna region. First, I would like to thank uh, the managing authority and the Joint Secretariat of uh, the Italy-Croatia Interreg Programme, as well as our host, the city of Ferrara, for organizing uh, this event. Emilia-Romagna is proud to participate in the Italy-Croatia Programme, that is a fundamental instrument of cross-border cooperation. During the 2014-2020 programming period, our region was involved in uh, 92 founded projects, of which 58 directly concerned public and private actors in our region. In this already very active context, I can proudly say that beneficiaries from the regional system also took part in all the 11 strategic projects financed by the program. Intervening on issues of primary importance for the cooperation area, such as blue growth, environmental protection, biodiversity preservation in the Adriatic Sea, and climate change adaptation. All these issues are coherent with the priorities and objectives described in our regional strategic documents. For this reason, our participation in the Italy-Croatia strategic projects represent a positive support to further the sustainable development of our territories. Many actions have been founded from digital tools for data collection and monitoring of environmental issues to agreements and strategies for climate change adaptation and marine and coastal management. These strategic projects have developed experiences that will be important for the future, continuing to design strategies that are tailor-made based on the structural needs of our territories. For this reason, in the 2021-2027 programming period, we wish to continue on engagement to the program and start the planning process with an even broader involvement of public and private stakeholders in the eligible area. Our aim is to keep supporting the cooperation between Italy and Croatia, addressing common challenges in a sustainable and innovative way. I look forward to hearing the insights of today's participants and to continue progressing together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Calvano. 
Our next guest is uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Olivier Baudelet from European Commission DG Region. The floor is yours, Mr. Baudelet. Yeah, good morning, uh, everybody. Um, this event, I, I must say, is, is really important. Uh, important for us also in the, the European Commission because after seven years of implementation between 2014 and 2020, we will now really see the results uh, of the many uh, projects which have been co-funded by the EU. Um, with these projects, what we want in the EU is really to have an impact um, on the regions, an impact on the daily life of the citizens living here, and an impact also on the territories, be it on the land or be it uh, on the sea. Uh, it's really the impact that matters. We want to make a difference, and this difference should be visible uh, by the people so that they see uh, what the public authorities do for them, so that they see that the EU is doing good things for them, and so that also they can uh, better uh, live in a cross-border area with more contacts uh, on the other side of the border. In uh, the current programming period, so not the one that we will talk about at the start of the meeting, but the, the period between 2021 and 2027, uh, we will even more reinforce the message that uh, we want a good impact on the ground of the different projects and actions that we fund. Um, and that's why we have proposed to have more strategic projects. We will come back to it later in the conference because it's really a big novelty it's something important uh, and it's really good that we can discuss it a bit further uh, later uh, during the day. So I wish you all a very good conference and again it's uh, an important moment for us to see the, the results. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Borle. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Mrs. Stella Arneri from Croatian Ministry of Regional Development and EU Funds to greet you. Thank you very much, Renata. Good morning to you all. Uh, I would like to greet you personally, of course, and on behalf of the Ministry of Regional Development and EU Funds and on behalf of our Minister, Mr. Erlich. Um, I really would like uh, to thank Managing Authority and Technical Secretariat for organizing this uh, conference and uh, this meeting and also uh, for organizing yesterday's study visit to the projects. Uh, um, it is really uh, nice to be here in the beautiful city of Ferrara. Um, so the Interreg program uh, Italy-Croatia has recognized the needs of strategic cross-border uh, relevance stemming from the program area and has developed 11 strategic projects as a specific tool to address these needs on a larger scale. Uh, so we chose um, a really wide range of topics uh, that we covered. Um, so strategic project defined um, uh, and aimed to offer solutions for important uh, common topics uh, from fire prevention, earthquake and floods, uh, prevention of pollution, adaptation to climate change, of course management and promotion of uh, Adriatic as a sustainable and the year-round uh, green destination through joint and sustainable management of the protection of marine uh, resources. Uh, but what we consider uh, the most important fact is that in the programming period 2014-2020, uh, we built a strong and efficient cross-border partnerships in solving all these issues. And today we are going to see the results of uh, all 11 strategic projects. Um, it is also important to note that um, the strategic projects were launched in 2020 when uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic really <laughs> raised. Uh, and uh, through good coordination and cooperation of all program bodies and project partners, and despite, of course, all obstacles presented by the pandemic, um, the projects were successfully implemented, and that is also the most important thing. Uh, all this experience will be used also now uh, to design new strategic projects. We already started uh, with really a new, concise and structured approach. 
and um, we form all already the working groups uh, which will help to define uh, the thematic scope of the projects uh, for the new uh, programming perspective. So we hope also that the new strategic projects will be successful as uh, the previous one and uh, that will create uh, really benefits for both countries, partner countries, Italy and Croatia. I sincerely hope that um, all partners from both countries will, will benefit from the program in the future, that uh, the partnerships will be even more uh, strength, and um, that the established partnerships will develop a new one, uh, contribute, contributing to the overall prosperity of the program area. Uh, the Ministry of Regional Development and EU funds is always on your disposal, and uh, I really wish you a pleasant and fruitful day. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Arneri. Uh, now I would like to invite Ms. Uh, Cat Mrs. Caterina De Pietro from Directorate for Joint Programming of Veneto Region. The floor is yours. Thank you, Renata, and good morning to all the participants and the institution that uh, are here in Ferrara and, and online. I'm glad to give uh, this speech today um, on behalf of the director, our director of the area in Veneto region, Mr. Santo Romano, uh, who had uh, unforeseen commitment this morning in Venice. I would like to bring the best greetings uh, on behalf of the Veneto region also, First of all, to the Emilia Romagna, uh, active member of the monitoring committee and inside the Interreg Italy Croatia program that made it possible to organize this important event today, despite uh, the floodings that severely hit these territories last days, only a few weeks ago. We are as Veneto region, uh, very close to the institution and to the people um, that are still working hard for the recovery after such a natural disaster. And we are strongly convinced of the importance to invest in climate change and emergency risk uh, pro management project to improve prevention measures. Secondly, let me thank the uh, director of the University of Ferrara for hosting us in this beautiful and prestigious uh, venue. Furthermore, my gratitude to the European Commission uh, that, is very with, uh, that is here uh, with us today and that is continuously supporting the program, allowing its smooth implementation. Uh, finally, I would like to congratulate uh, with the management bodies of the program, in particular with the managing authority, Flavia Zucon and uh, Silvia Comiati, JS. Uh, we work uh, together in Veneto region and we, we have uh, an excellent uh, collaboration. Um, this event today uh, will show the main results of the strategic projects uh, which are among the most important initiatives founded by the Italia-Croatia uh, program. These are 11, uh, 11 very important projects because they uh, highlight the potential of the program to be able to produce a positive change in the territories of the cooperation area. And uh, for this reason, we, want, uh, we wanted to promote these initiatives and valorize the results achieved. So uh, that day will also be a starting point for the project uh, of the 2021 and 2027 programming period that we soon uh, begin. Today, uh, we will also have a taste of the future possibilities represented by the operation of the strategic importance to be financed by the program in the second call for proposal 21-27. Yesterday, uh, we went uh, together with the monitoring committee members in a study visit uh, to see the achievements of other Italia-Croatian projects. 
uh, I was very glad to visit these sites and learn about the activities that develop and I'm hoping in the current program period uh, for more integration and more synergies among the different European funds to maximize the positive effects for the people living in our regions. Um, finally, uh, it is important to make sure that the results are not neglected or remain unknown. And also, is, it is fundamental that the new operation of strategic importance builds on the achievements of previous projects. I wish you a nice havens and good luck to institution for the design of the new projects. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, De Pietro. Uh, we have foreseen one more uh, speaker, our dear guest, Mr. Marco Doglia from Italian Presidency of the Council of Ministries, Department for Cohesion Policy. You are online, Mr. Doglia? Yes? Can you hear yes, us? Yes, I am online. Yeah, the floor well, is yours, Mr. Yes. Doglia. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Dear Croatian colleagues, dear uh, European Commission representative, dear managing authority representatives and dear participants. Unfortunately, I was not able to attend in person, but it is our, a great pleasure to give uh, an, uh, some introductory remarks to this very important event. It is because strategic projects are an important part of the program as they contribute to the achievement of its objectives and the joint development of territories involved. And they, as we have heard, must have an impact on these territories, an impact on topics that have crucial value for the area. We have heard about the, the, the food risk management, which unfortunately represents an important today emergency that hit the Emilia Romagna region last month and to whom we express all our solidarity and closeness. But they also cover other important topics like emergency prevention and management, technology transfer, adaptation to climate changes and to its street, protection of the Adriatic fish resources, and protection of endangered species, just to name a few. We must recall that many of these issues are inside the strategy and, uh, in fact, are also relevant to the European strategy for the Adriatic and Ionian region, to which the Italian Croatia program contributes and will increase support. I hope. Strategic projects are also the health of cohesion policy programs, where we expect to see increased synergies. Synergies are important for us. The involvement today of many representatives of other interreg programs of the area provide, in my opinion, a good basis for building a stronger coordination in the 21-27 programming period which is critical for increasing the impact of interact projects in the Adriatic and the Union region. As uh, the, the European Commission representative was, was saying, we have recently begun to planning for strategic project for the next period, for the 21-27 period, which will provide an opportunity to capitalize on the build and build, sorry, on the outcomes of the strategic projects from the previous period, from the 1420. This event today will be an opportunity to deepen and present these results and to create a bridge between the old programmation period and the new programming cycle to have, if possible, even stronger results to a new generation of, as was saying the European Commission, impactful projects. We want impact. Let me conclude this intervention by wishing to the speakers and the organizer a great success for this event that uh, I will follow with great interest also from afar. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dolia. Thank you to all our speakers. Thank you. Now we are approaching the core of the day. 
uh, I would like to invite our uh, next uh, speakers. So again, we have hosts uh, who will present their experience. Uh, so University of Ferrara and Mrs. Elena Benvenuti and Mrs. Carmela uh, Vaccaro will present their experience in the project implementation. You can take your seats, please. I know you, you are maybe used to, 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 uh, to be, uh, do you prefer to sit or? Okay, yeah, yeah, thank you. So, Professoressa, <laughs> Professor Elena Benvenuti, and uh, Professor Carmela Vaccaro, please. In the, in the PMO Gate project, which was a project. Uh, okay, uh, please, <laughs> this is not my. The wrong and, presentation, um, yeah, okay. We, we predicted to present first PMO Gate project, isn't it? Yes. Yes, okay. I'm here for PMO Gate project, which uh, is. Uh, um, a project uh, dealing with uh, uh, multi-risks assessment and management. The acronym stands for Protect, Manage, Overcome, Mitigate uh, uh, the Natural Hazards, which uh, feature the territories of uh, Ferrara and Castella. Uh, it was a partnership including seven partners, um, which were the Municipality of Ferrara, the um, uh, Municipality of Castella, uh, INGV, OGS, the University of Ferrara, uh, and uh, the University of Split, uh, the engineering department. Um, so we focused on seismic uh, flood uh, and uh, um, extreme coastal flooding events, which are the, the main relevant uh, um, hazards for uh, this um, uh, territories uh, and the three pillars uh, we, uh, the, the project relies on are mainly uh, capitalization of existing multi-risk plans, uh, new multi-risk models which enable uh, public agencies and uh, managers and the stakeholders to uh, prioritize interventions to deal with uh, these uh, uh, natural hazard risks. Uh, and there was a, a great need of this kind of models, which, because in the literature there are not so many, and uh, an important part was the communication, to raise awareness of population against this kind of, uh, um, of risk. So, uh, among the several outcomes, we obtained a database for tsunamis and method tsunamis in the Adriatic Sea, which was a, a, a very new result. Uh, it, it is a, um, uh, a, a tool, uh, an automatic tool, an open access automatic tool that, that allows everybody to consult and, and see uh, the case of uh, previous instances of this kind of um, risks. And uh, we developed a new uh, multi-risk assessment uh, methodology able to uh, combine uh, hydraulic and seismic risk to uh, formulate uh, a ranking of the municipalities of the Emilia-Romagna region using uh, uh, machine learning uh, algorithms. Uh, another application was uh, a prioritization, uh, a ranking of the various municipalities of the Ferraro province um, uh, by means of uh, a, a different algorithm, which was a, a multiple criteria approach. And again, we succeeded in the, um, uh, producing these qualitative maps that rank the various uh, parts and uh, areas of the region we are focusing on into high, medium, uh, low uh, risk uh, um, de degree, uh, depending also on the starting uh, risks, which were mainly, as I said, uh, uh, for the Ferrara uh, seismic and flooding risk. And uh, Castella, we made also the same, uh, we applied the same methodology and developed uh, combined risk maps of Castella, uh, taking into account uh, extreme uh, coastal flooding events and the seismic risk 
these were very new um, outcomes which were published um, also on scientific papers. An important um, part of the project was the dissemination. As I said, we had um, the opportunity to, to, to make uh, um, very nice videos that were available to everybody. They are open access videos. We have a, a YouTube channel where all the videos we made are available. Uh, often they are videos in three different languages. Uh, they were um, developed just for the sake of being used by uh, common population, not, not for specialists, but they're intended to be used by people interested uh, in uh, learning and understanding more about the risks of their territories. Uh, among the rich targets, we involved more than uh, um, 100,000 people uh, through our um, com communication campaign. We made a, a, a training campaign for civil protection volunteers. Uh, we uh, had uh, established the relationships with eight education training centers, 71 local, regional, national public authorities and related entities. We made a telegram channel for sensibilization of population. More than 200 schools, universities and research institutes were reached. We uh, um, developed a, a, a communication campaign together with the secondary schools in Ferrara and also in Castella. We produced more than 20 videos and open and access documents, as I said, more than 120 deliverables. All the, the target outputs were reached. And uh, these are the, the, main, uh, the, the, the main results we obtained. Since I finished my time, I would like to thank you for your attention and just saying that we, are, um, um, we have, we have uh, proposed a, a new project uh, also focusing on this very strategic uh, um, relevant topic which is uh, the, the tackling of uh, flooding, seismic risk, multi-risk and um, which is very relevant thank today. You, thank you, thank uh, you very much. Professor Rafael Benvenuti. There are many, many uh, possibilities for, uh, for further uh, okay. capitalization okay. of the project. Thank you. <laughs> Professor Vaccaro. Uh, um, we have uh, collaborated to three projects. Uh, all uh, these projects have a uh, focus in the uh, Pillar 3 uh, and the Marine Strategy, uh, Formwork Directive, and the Barcelona. Um, uh, protocols. Uh, resistance uh, uh, is uh, a managing a uh, successful project, program uh, who, whose goal is to capitalize the seven interreg project. Uh, the, uh, the leader part is the municipality of Postrana and uh, in the cluster there are two of the house projects that are Ecomap and the Net for, uh, and Plastic. Ecomap uh, is the focus of uh, Ecomap is the management of uh, small ports and beach for uh, the management of the sediments, uh, reduce the um, uh, west uh, with the circular uh, um, strategy and uh, uh, net uh, was focused to reduce the plastic uh, materials in the beach and in the sea uh, environment and uh, uh, the characterization of uh, the plastic in relation to geomorphological environment. And uh, uh, we have uh, a proposal the um, virtual museum for engagement uh, uh, public engagement and uh, the uh, um, uh, platform for uh, the uh, database uh, management uh, so after uh, the project uh, all the results can be uh, uh, collection. Uh, we have uh, uh, um, 
define 16 uh, explorable uh, uh, key uh, funding and uh, for the net we have a collection uh, 21,508 uh, uh, five uh, plastic materials uh, for the characterization. We have de developed several uh, methods for collection, analysis, and uh, define the risk of the plastic. And we can see the uh, distribution of the plastic in relation to the geomorphological environment. So is, uh, we can planning the uh, strategy for reduce the impact and we have seen the relation with the vegetable distribution and with the climate condition. We have developed in the project several drone uh, facilitation for uh, detect uh, the, the plastic uh, with uh, a manta, sensor uh, and uh, other strategy. Uh, so uh, it's possible to um, uh, characterize the plastic with a small cost. Uh, we have uh, working with the uh, a mollusk for define the risk for the health and uh, in uh, several uh, conditions we have seen uh, if it's possible uh, depuration of the, uh, the mollusk from the plastic with a stabulation uh, time uh, exposure. Uh, we can see uh, the uh, results of the exposition uh, the, uh, the plastic the uh, human uh, cell to the plastic materials of one and three micron and uh, the results uh, show that they can modify the cell human cell and uh, this is a very problem, so uh, uh, it's important to reduce the nano and microplastic of small dimension uh, in the environment. Uh, uh, other results uh, concerning the small port, uh, where uh, one problem is the sediments uh, management and the waste uh, pollution, marine litter in uh, the, uh, the ports. Uh, we have uh, used several uh, test sites uh, for uh, detected the impact of the several typology of the plastic and we can see the strategy that we have used for detecting the disimpacts. I, have, I am finished. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Vaccaro. It was not easy to, to, to present in such a short time. Uh, uh, yeah, great results. Thank you. And now I'm inviting my colleague, um, Program Communication Manager, Thea Ivanishevich, who will continue. So the, the floor is yours there now. Thank you. So hello uh, to everybody, to, to everybody here today and also to our audience that is following us online and we know there are plenty of them also out there, so many thanks for that. Uh, now we step into the, um, the, 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 I would say not the clue, but uh, very important part of our today work presentation because everything is uh, going around uh, our strategic projects. So we have 11 of them 
Uh, today we will have them 10 because we have just one project uh, that, is, that is having a, a, a parallel a final event. As you know, the strategic projects are finishing right now during this month. So uh, we have divided uh, our 11 projects into two slots. And uh, we um, will show you, they will show you directly what they achieved and how did they work. Okay, so for the first lot, I would like to in invite my um, projects uh, to, to join us on the stage. Inova Mare, uh, Matteo Ivanaz, uh, Stream, okay. And uh, the other projects from uh, from our first slot, so we can we can sit down. Uh, also, Adria Klim, yes, please, please step on. Andrea, Torresan from uh, Marles, we have space. Yes, please. So we did not had any time for rehearsal. Please, I beg your pardon, <laughs> but uh, we did. Prepare, uh, please, uh, okay, thanks. We did prepare some common methodology. We prepared some, uh, some common uh, methodology for preparation of these uh, um, presentations to align and to try to show you uh, the best achievements. So I will sit down near Matteo and say hello to everybody. Thank you for accepting, thank you for coming, thank you for your work uh, on uh, these last uh, days uh, for the preparation of your materials and your uh, uh, and your photos as well that we ask that will be the best way to showcase uh, your work and some um, in some of these um, experiences and uh, of presentations we will have also the video right Matteo, so if you would like to start with your, with your presenting Innova Mare as a, a lead partner of that important project, I will give you the word. Thank you. Thank you, Thea. Uh, buongiorno a tutti. Dobro dan svima. Uh, we have a video that to show and then afterwards I'll just say a couple of words of Innova Mare project. So if you can put the video. In my opinion, the main legacy of the Innovabare project is the fact to have built an ecosystem of people. Uh, you know, Innovamare is a complex project that aims really high. And in order to achieve uh, this aim, you need to put together uh, many people across the, the two countries. Legacy of the Innovamare project is the development of this digital innovation hub, which brings together researchers from universities, institutes, together with companies to work on specific problems related to uh, marine pollution, uh, agriculture, everything related to blue growth. At, the, at this moment, we are working on uh, the finalizing of the Blue Vision 2030 of Puglia region, in which a lot of the results of the project uh, in Lamare will be um, used for, to develop a better uh, strategy for a sustainable and um, innovative blue economy in the Puglia region. So we are working uh, to develop two spin-off of uh, the Lamare project, one uh, concerning uh, the digital innovation art and uh, one more focused on uh, blue skills, innovative skills. Uh, this project can be used, the results of this project, for, for a lot of uh, different kind of uh, topics, and, uh, but one of the most important is, is uh, the sustainability. During the 
implementation of Innova Mare project, we really had opportunity to learn a lot of many new things uh, through the different workshops, through different events that will definitely be uh, a basis for the future implementation of what we learned through this project for knowledge and technology transfer and also to uh, try to reach the sustainability of the Nova Mare project. In this project I learned really a lot and the Nova Mare uh, lead to us uh, one of the best experience uh, in terms of uh, transboundary cooperation, in terms of uh, uh, sharing the knowledge and also um, interacting with different and many, many actors. Uh, for the Maritime Technology Cluster of Florida and San Giulia region, uh, Inova Mare represents a great opportunity because it uh, gives us the possibility to constantly relate and to be involved in, in a relevant innovation ecosystem connected to underwater robotics and sensoring. Uh, when considering even uh, maritime technologies that are, uh, let's say, uh, the relevant and uh, the primary core of our cluster in the, in the innovation and the production chain, and the opportunity to widen and to be involved in a, such a wider, uh, let's say, uh, scenario of activities and achievements, uh, uh, leverage our understanding and competences in relating with these technologies and to uh, bring back to our cluster members and to our, let's say, stakeholders what is the importance of this sector and how we can improve it together. I think the, the biggest legacy of this project is forming of our group of uh, companies together the private sector. Thank you. This is just a, s a small part of the, of the video that we made. Um, I will be really short in presentation of the results uh, because what we did uh, in the project is build an ecosystem really of excellence people on a cross-border level. And we never said uh, this is a Croatian or Italian project, whether the Croatian is a lead or whether Italians are the partners, it's a cross-border project and we really work on this, on this level. The main achievement uh, that we believe in is the sustainability. We have uh, established a digital innovation hub in Omar. It's a private entity that has been established by 17 organizations, companies, scientific research institutions from Italy, and from Croatia. You can just imagine how hard it is to uh, have an agreement with 17 institutions signed uh, all together to continue the results of Inova Mare project and we are continuing. We already developed five new projects that are based on the results of Inova Mare with involved 14, uh, 40 uh, institutions and from our community. We involved 350 uh, members and stakeholders from uh, Italy and Croatia into Digital Innovation Hub in Mare. And uh, with this private entity, we have chosen the management board, we have chosen the assembly, and we are continuing the results. Uh, we have signed an agreement with 15 infrastructural sites in Venice, Bari, Trieste, Šibenik, Zadar and Dubrovnik. We are talking about shellfish farms, we are talking about uh, nautical marinas, we are talking about the sites where we want to bring innovative technologies uh, that can transform and make blue economy more sustainable. And this is, we call it a living lab in Adriatic Sea. And this is what the Digital Innovation Hub will continue to work on. So the strategic project in our uh, context of the partnership of the Innova Mare is not ending on 30th of uh, June. We are working as we are uh, the project and we are continuing our efforts. And how we did that? We did that by developing and establishing this private entity and by uh, raising our private investments of 300,000 euros of uh, uh, money from these institutions 
that allows us to continue in a sustainable way without funding from the project so or other projects in this in this period so this is the way how we sh see the sustainability of our project one more really important message to all the audience here if we want to make a bigger impact and we saw this through this project we have to have a strategical approach and long-term commitment to these kind of initiatives and this is only way how it can make a really bigger impact and the second is the sustainability we have to work on the sustainability of the results because money is otherwise wasted and this is what we really try to achieve through uh, Innova Mare. Thank you. Thank you, Mate. Thank you. Thank you, Matteo. Um, would you just mention briefly about the drone? We haven't made, we haven't seen the drone, just for the second, because this is really interesting for our audience. I mean, besides uh, all this building up of the innova of the innovation cross-border community and ecosystem, uh, I think it's nice and very interesting to to check it out, uh, not because it's just an equipment, uh, because it, it was something that you used to, for, for the innovation and for the other applications in the area. So if you can just say a couple of words of, of your drone, please. Uh, and where did you use it? We can see some photos here, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Tia. So the, there are two prototypes of drones who are uh, dealing with monitoring and uh, uh, monitoring of pollution and the different kind of aspects on influence on the sea from the tourism from the nautical uh, traffic and others and uh, we have developed these two prototypes in collaboration of companies and scientific research institutions one is here Korkira it is a catamaran autonomous vehicle doing monitoring of uh, marinas and their um, uh, traffic influence on the on the sea yeah. and the second one is the um, uh, swamp we call it swamp and it has an ability to go in the low depth waters because of the of the uh, different kind of the uh, movement system that they have developed and uh, we have great successes with two, two, these two prototypes one has already been sold as a solution this is Korkira and the second one swamp has been used by the Polish University in their project on the Ar Arctic they, they seen an opportunity to use it on Arctic and this has already twice been used uh, by the Polish University so uh, we, we believe that the prototypes have reached their level of uh, implementation and now we are uh, in the DIG, we are developing a wet lab, mm -hmm. a wet lab that will enable to get these prototypes as a solution to the market. Great. Yeah. I think, I think uh, that your project uh, really strategically reached some uh, innovation objectives. So, thank you for having presented this uh, project to us and uh, many compliments for your work, for the work of your whole partnership. And uh, applause for uh, Matteo and uh, Innova Mare. If you want to stay, stay with us if you want to. <laughs> okay, we, we pass uh, on to, to another project uh, which is called Stream. And Maria Dushevich from Zadranova is uh, our speaker today. Very, very warm welcome to you, Maria, and thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, would you present a little bit of your context of the project and uh, in a couple of minutes with uh, you can um, we can see what you have prepared. You have the, the, the slider over there and, and the microphone uh, over here. Thank you so much. Dobar dan svima, good day to all, buongiorno, I covered the, all languages, I'm sorry, I don't know if, it, if there is some uh, local uh, greetings from uh, Ferrara region, I will uh, learn it for the next time. Uh, I greet you all in behalf of the whole uh, stream project and on the name of uh, Zadar County uh, Development Agency, Zadar Nova Director, Marina dujmovic vukovic who is also here today with us. So, uh, why we... Why we all implement uh, Project Stream? Uh, don't worry, I, I don't have quiz for you. I will show you. So I will just see how is my relationship with uh, technology. Uh, it's not so good. 
Yes, I'm trying that, but sorry, can you help me, please? Uh, can you just uh, uh, go to the next slide, please? Thank you. And start the video, thank you. We will do it this way, it's okay. Uh, it's video, can you start it, please? This is our Adriatic coast, our strands, our lagoons, our cities. In recent years, we have been witnessing the rising of the sea level. Rainfalls are getting shorter and more intense. The risk of flooding has increased also in many highly vulnerable areas of the Adriatic Basin. All these phenomena contribute to the risk of flooding. STREAM is a cross-border cooperation project funded by the Interreg Italy-Croatia program. What is the reason uh, why we uh, started to plan and why we uh, implemented the stream project? Uh, aim was to reduce uh, human and uh, social economical losses uh, in a case of the flood. Uh, unfortunately, we in Croatia and also in Italy, we have uh, big uh, floods uh, with uh, human losses. So uh, we, we know it's uh, time uh, to react. So we. Uh, we started with a stream and we believe this is just the start because we have also project uh, ideas for the next period uh, and we started to pre uh, for, with preparation for another project. So what we do, uh, project idea was uh, to uh, reduce uh, uh, flood effect. So we, uh, these ideas we had, uh, we, uh, we managed them it, uh, in output. So, uh, we have iFlood platform, it's online platform uh, which collects all the, da all the data from Italy and the uh, Croatian, uh, Croatian uh, pa project partners and uh, Croatian Adriatic Coast uh, with uh, another elements created uh, through project, that's our flood cadaster which was uh, updated in Italy and created in Croatia, flood risk uh, management pla plans and uh, flood uh, forecasting uh, situation and uh, uh, education and drills uh, so in, uh, in aim to uh, raise awareness and to inform uh, general public and uh, volunteers and all the target audience uh, to know what we do and what can they do uh, to predict and to react in the case of the flood. So uh, here we... Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is iFlood, uh, iFlood uh, platform. You have here a QR code. If you scan it now, you can uh, visit the uh, uh, platform. So this platform is a digital heart of the project because everything uh, we did uh, through the project, you can find uh, here. You can find uh, here a flood cadaster. You, you have uh, here examples from uh, Italy and uh, from uh, Croatia. Uh, you can also find uh, flood risk management plans and uh, flood uh, forecasting. Uh, now we are in the phase of uh, unification information uh, from uh, Italy and from Croatia and uh, putting them up in the platform. And uh, that, that's not all. We had also different other activities. Okay, this is video. It started, so uh, 11 partners acquired equipment uh, for the emergency service. So they tested the uh, equipment, but they also use it uh, in a uh, real floods uh, we had uh, in the uh, last uh, weeks and last months in uh, Croatia and in Italy. Uh, in Opus, and uh, we see the building. Uh, it's, uh, and uh, in Zadar, this is our rain gardens. Uh, we have two rain, rain gardens in Zadar, one in Biograd, one in Porec, but uh, more about rain gardens later. This is the booklet uh, and the leaflet for uh, general audience and leaf, uh, booklet uh, for the kids because uh, in project uh, we put great emphasis on the kids uh, because we need to make habits uh, from the early age. So uh, we do a lot of, a lot of, a lot of activities uh, with kids. Uh, more, uh, almost uh, 3,000 people 
directly participated in uh, our activities, but the reach, uh, overall reach was the much, much uh, bigger. Uh, bec uh, it was uh, really multiplied because uh, we had a really good media coverage uh, and we had kids who, t uh, who, uh, who talked to their parents about what they uh, saw and what they learned. Uh, kids, even they made, uh, from their experience, they made they, their own uh, leaflet and their own uh, booklet about uh, floods. Uh, through different activities, uh, we have uh, urgent services education, local government education, training of civil volunteers, and so on. But uh, these numbers are not uh, uh, final numbers because uh, we have uh, still ongoing activities, and till the end of the June, uh, this number will be much more higher, and they will overpass those indicators uh, in the project uh, application. Are you speaking uh, about uh, um, the kids from schools or uh, from uh, kindergartens? We had a, a, a kids from school and for, from kindergartens because we had uh, three uh, rain gardens in Zadar County. One is uh, near kindergarten and uh, one is uh, in a schoolyard uh, yeah. and uh, one is uh, mm -hmm. uh, near the big road uh, but uh, we took the kids from the school and yes. they were uh, they were there with us uh, we gave them a flower a plant uh, to plant the flowers to plant uh, the flower mm -hmm. it was a challenge but mm -hmm. without social media uh, okay. the challenge was to plant flower and to send a photo to us like a uh, proof they they did that oh yes. i understand yeah, and yeah, we yeah. got uh, we uh, almost 100% of the photo of the plants uh, back uh, through photo back to photo yes. so it was kind of uh, yeah. and uh, one of the most interesting uh, part of our project was a uh, pilot project activity, mm -hmm. smart urban drainage system, uh, rain gardens. Uh, through project we made four rain gardens, one in Poreć in Istria, uh, and uh, two in uh, Zadar, city of Zadar, and one in Biograd. And this is a small uh, video. So, this is start. And this is now uh, with uh, also with a lot of flowers. And this is third one uh, near the road was uh, flooded recently. And this is the rain garden on the ground. Uh, there is gravitating basin who collects water, and the water through oil, uh, oil separator goes to uh, in the earth, but uh, purificated. Purificated, and you have uh, these uh, green gardens in the yes. schools. Uh, yes, well we have done. now green gardens, and mm -hmm. we have now really good place uh, for people uh, to gather, uh, to exercise, uh, to enjoy. Uh, because uh, we put some benches uh, and uh, other uh, material, uh, other uh, elements. Uh, so mm -hmm. we implement uh, mm -hmm. really. Uh, it was a really a good effect uh, for all the local government and the mayors from uh, Biograd and from Zadar. They are so impressed and uh, now they are planning to, uh, planning to uh, uh, build a new uh, rain gardens in Zadar and in Biograd. So replicate your experience. Yes, uh, yes. And that's good. One, of, that's the good output, one of the output of the stream is to uh, project preparation and project planning for the uh, new uh, rain gardens. So it really well, we have impact uh, in our society so uh, in, uh, in conclusion I can say that yeah. it was really a good partnership it was challenging because, because we have marriage, it's just two people in partnership and it's challenging and the statistics show us not always so successful and uh, here we have 21 partner uh, in a three year period yes. uh, yeah, it was challenging but it's, it was successful so it was and strategic. Yeah, and strategic, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mari. Well done. Thank well done to you and to your partnership. Thank you for having presented it. Uh, actually, we, we saw it last year when, uh, with coordinator of JS, we organized uh, an event, uh, internal event of our uh, uh, secretariat, and we, we had uh, the visit. So we, we saw at that time just uh, building up, uh, but it was interesting and uh, we were keen to know more. So um, let's go to Andrea. Uh, good morning to you. Andrea Valentini from Arpe, Emilia okay. Romagna. Good morning, Thea. Good morning, everybody. 
I will talk to you about uh, the Agrakin project. Uh, the project is uh, related to uh, adaptation plan to, uh, uh, for uh, the Adriatic Sea, for the coastal part of the Adriatic Sea. So, which is the background that inspired the, the project. Uh, uh, according to the National Adaptation Plan for Climate Change, uh, we will, uh, it is foreseen uh, a surface temperature increase of about one and two uh, degrees. Uh, that will uh, uh, drive uh, to some problems to the ecosystem and to the coast. As well as the, the, the sea level will, will, will rise of about seven, from seven to nine centimeters with uh, possible coastal erosion and uh, uh, coastal floodings. So uh, these were the themes that inspired us. And uh, we, we, uh, we said that uh, we, we need, we need uh, there is a, an extremely urgent uh, of, uh, need of adaptation plan for the coastal areas. And this is also stated by the last uh, IPCC report, uh, the uh, assessment report number six. So, uh, Okay, uh, the three main objectives uh, we, uh, we set are the development of adaptation plans for the coastal area, the development of monitoring systems, monitoring systems in terms of uh, observation and modeling, numerical modeling system, and to strengthen the adaptation capacity by building cross-border cooperation. How we did that? Uh, we, we follow a, a model, what I call the Adriatic model. So the first step is the knowledge, the knowledge that is uh, uh, acquired, that is, uh, uh, is given by the observation and from the model. Then I have a, a, a central block that is the tools. I have to develop some tools that will help, will help the uh, policy makers to, uh, to draft adaptation plan, that is the last block. So the action, take action. Take action by means of uh, adaptation plans, adaptation measures, strategies, or guidelines. So we have to notice that the first two blocks uh, are mainly uh, characterized by the interaction of uh, different actors, uh, university, research, uh, technicians, they call the public and private bodies, uh, and so on, that uh, collaborate, strongly collaborate together sometimes in a, in a very anarchic wave. Uh, the, 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 the last step, instead, uh, is maybe driven by the politics and the institutional bodies. And uh, sometimes it's not so easy to interact uh, uh, with uh, each other, especially w in time. So the time of the first two blocks is completely, the time length of the first two blocks is completely different from the uh, time length of uh, politics. So uh, these were the, the uh, specific jobs that are assigned by the managing authorities. And uh, this is, these are the results. So the first uh, part is uh, observation, so the knowledge. As you can see here, we were able to implement 12 new or upgrading of service system across the, the Adriatic Sea. Uh, uh, tools and equipment, uh, many different from each other. It is just an overview uh, of some of the equipment that were installed. Uh, we, uh, big equipments at the first boy, as you can see from the Ruder Boscovich Institute in the Northern Adriatic, that is a oceanographic buoy with uh, meteorological parameters, uh, measurements, and so on. And small equipment, but everything, as the, 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 the University of Bologna is the first I'm looking at, uh, for the uh, uh, the sediment transport to, to, to estimate the sediment transport and the sediment present in the water. So everything is really important for the knowledge of the system. Uh, this is the, the technical, the most, uh, the most te technical part and scientific part. We have to uh, downscale, technical downscaling, uh, but transport the information we have uh, at a global scale at the local scale, because we need a local adaptation plan. So policymaker needs a tool and uh, indicators and number to understand what is foreseen in the next 50, 10, uh, 100 years, okay, in order to take action and to draft uh, plans. So 
uh, we uh, moved from the uh, global scale to the regional scale, that is the, the added basin, uh, considering all the uh, environment uh, together, so the atmosphere, the ocean, the biogeochemistry, and the waves interacting all together. And from this uh, regional to the sub-regional, so in five pilot areas, we developed uh, uh, sub-regional modeling systems in order to uh, achieve a, a more accurate and uh, a, a, a more uh, a detailed information for the coastal area. Tools, central blocks, uh, we developed a geoportal, geoportal that is uh, the tools in which uh, the policymaker can find the indication they want to, uh, to achieve, okay, they need. Uh, this is to be fina finalized, uh, is only released uh, at the link uh, and uh, as uh, each uh, in, uh, information system has some bugs that, that have to be fixed in the next month. But uh, you can find there observation data set and indicators data set. Okay, that is the, 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 the important part uh, for the adaptation plans. Adaptation measure, so action. Uh, we had uh, nine pilots uh, in which uh, adaptation measure, uh, measure me, uh, means that uh, in some pilot we had, uh, we were able to, to issue adaptation plans uh, and uh, some uh, pilots in which uh, we had just guidelines, but everything is important because uh, we start uh, uh, from a condition that is uh, really poor for the, uh, from the coastal area. So uh, it's a, a strong uh, improvement of, uh, of the region that faces on the Adriatic Sea. Okay, here you can see all the uh, pilots uh, which developed uh, adaptation measure and put in place uh, adaptation measure. Plus uh, the sustainability of the project. So the creation of a, a transnational body that is called the Transnational Expert Management Body composed by uh, professionals and uh, people who has a strong background in climate change adaptation and mitigation that will interact, we collaborate together also at the, the, at the end of the project. Uh, arriving at the uh, communication divulgation part, uh, divulgative part, uh, we organized the three main uh, scientific and political events the first one was in split in June, last, uh, last June of the last year. One was in Brussels together with uh, some uh, European uh, political uh, bodies, and the last one in Ravenna. And we had the opportunity to interact together and to exchange experience. Uh, again, uh, the importance of, uh, of the training and the information so the development of a, a, a specific uh, a climate literacy tool. There is a website that has been developed in which you can find information about uh, how, what is uh, the climate change, uh, which is, what, what is adaptation. Uh, there are some experiences that are documented on the, on the uh, web. And you can find uh, many materials and of course, uh, uh, the, the most we produce the material, the most the, the, the tool will be effective. And uh, the last numbers, we had uh, 20 info days and workshop. Uh, we had the strong networking together with other uh, strategical problems. Since uh, mainly since uh, we were as we were partners in the in the same project, uh, this helped us uh, to develop uh, the tools. Uh, the tools and the model consider all the different aspects uh, that, well, uh, that were uh, tackled by the different uh, project. So create a uh, stream, cascade, uh, stream as well, and create the way there is the uh, Adriatic Adaptation Award in which one of the measures that were uh, developed in the Adriatic will is uh, one of uh, the participants, okay? YouTube channel, all the targets were reached and overcome, for sure, with uh, high-level performances. Uh, what's next? Uh, so, as I said, it's a pity that uh, the, the strategic projects uh, are ending right now, uh, since now we have the tools, uh, we develop the tools that uh, we need, and we would need uh, uh, more time uh, to, to be uh, even more effective, okay? 
But for sure, we have to continue with our resolution climate scenarios to be further developed, also because because size is, uh, is going on and is running fast. We have to keep the pressure on policymakers uh, because this is sometimes the problem, this is the stuck of the process. And we, keep, we have to keep uh, adaptation policy as living documents uh, since uh, we are talking about uh, change. Change is a dynamical aspect and so also documents and uh, policies have to be uh, dynamical. So protect the cost, adapt to climate change, this is our uh, Slogan. This is just a picture of uh, of the partnership during the last conference we had in Ravenna. We were uh, 19 partners. It so has many. Been a pleasure. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank Sorry you. Oh, so many. <laughs> <laughs> well done. So a uh, call for action. Actually, uh, besides these valuable communication actions done and uh, huge um, events that you organized in order to uh, enhance the communication versus your target groups. We can say call for action for uh, um, regional, national managers of uh, EU funds, also mainstream funds and so on, to consider the outputs of the uh, CTA, ATC. Right? <laughs> and to uh, pass the word also to the policymakers on these many valuable outputs that uh, the European Territorial Cooperation Strategic Projects of Italy Croatia produced. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, next one is uh, Fire Spill. Helena Bercic from uh, RERA agency from Split. Welcome, Helena, and thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Thea. It is a pleasure to be here today. It is my great pleasure to, to greet you all here today, those of you uh, present here today, and also those of you who are online, and to greet you all on behalf of uh, FireSpill Project, on, beha on behalf of the whole partnership. My name is Helena Bercic, I'm a project manager of the Firespill project and uh, I'm also representing here today a uh, lead partner which is public institution RERA from Split Dalmatia County. So, uh, to say a bit more about the Firespill project, um, actually we have a really uh, big and complex project which we are now at, at the end of its implementation. Uh, while uh, developing the project proposal, uh, we actually try to capitalize all the uh, activities and initiatives and projects to, and, and to capitalize the knowledge that we had from our previous um, actions. But also we were really encouraged uh, knowing and facing the situation in the cross-border area and we were strongly supported and encouraged by the needs of uh, emergency services in cross-border area both in, in Italy and in Croatia. So uh, actually we, we started working on this uh, project proposal and uh, we were faced with uh, uh, big uh, impact uh, from uh, climate changes on our cross-border area uh, which resulted with uh, natural and man-made disaster almost every day or every month in this uh, programming area. Therefore, the, the main objective, the main goal of the project is to enhance the safety in the, in the programming area and to enhance the reactions and the capacities of uh, cross-border uh, services. So, um, the project is actually implemented through five work packages, but to be more clear, uh, we divided it in, uh, let's say, three pillars, uh, mostly related to the pilot project deployment. So, one of them is fire and earthquake pilot deployment, the other one is oil spills and other marine hazards pilots deployment, and the third one is establishment of advanced training centers for firefighting and civil protection services. So. There was always um, the, the, the complexity actually of the project. Part of it lies in the, in the fact that we are a partnership of 14 institutions. And um, there was always a question also while preparing the project and uh, further on while implementing it, why is it uh, implemented uh, on the cross-border level? Um, 
Could it be implemented, uh, each partner, separately, since it's a, it's a, it's a huge project and it could be uh, financially and otherwise divided? But uh, the simple answer is that uh, uh, the hazards, the man-made and natural disasters, they, they don't recognize any formal borders, whether it's a regional border, whether it's a national border, and therefore we, we had to act together. And this is the reason actually for the, for the real uh, strong cross-border cooperation in this, in this field. Uh, so uh, we started developing a project, as you can, as you can say, <laughs> as you can see together, and uh, we managed to pull it uh, through, through, through the end. Uh, it is really um, a multidisciplinary partnership. Uh, we uh, managed to gather uh, together uh, also the science institutions, which contributed with uh, uh, really specific uh, and uh, uh, good prediction models. Uh, also decision makers, uh, regional, develop, uh, regional development agency, regional government, uh, which contributed to uh, adopting different uh, protocols uh, and uh, joint measures. And uh, also the, the uh, emergency services, uh, which enhanced their reactions, improved their reactions and made the uh, the, the area safer, and uh, also they were really a great support to us, both on Italian and Croatian side, during the whole project implementation, and now uh, while we are finishing and gathering uh, all the results. Uh, so I will try to, to uh, show the, the project implementation. Actually, uh, probably I will miss some of the outputs, but I will try to, to to show the photos of the main milestones and the uh, main outputs uh, of, the, of the project. So uh, purchasing vehicle was uh, one of the activities that was uh, uh, actually uh, meant to enhance the, the uh, emergency services uh, capacities. For instance, uh, this picture shows the um, uh, special vehicle, special custom-made boat split. in uh, Istria, in Istria County. So this one uh, is meant for the firefighting department in Istrian County, and it is uh, uh, really it was really necessary for the um, uh, for the quick interventions in the north part of the Adriatic, uh, mostly connected to the oil spills and other marine hazards uh, that are uh, possible and that are happening in this part of the Adriatic. Uh, on Shibenik Knin County, they purchased a special command uh, vehicle for the land interventions, uh, also custom made uh, vehicle for a special kind of interventions. Um, different partners uh, also purchased a different uh, uh, equipment, also very valuable and, and very, very specialized. Here we can see the special equipment uh, purchased by Abruzzo region. This is some kind of equipment which is related to the uh, helicopter interventions uh, uh, while, while rescuing and uh, during the hazards. Uh, also, other partners, uh, most of the partners actually uh, made the purchases of uh, special equipment. Uh, Zadar County, uh, Marke region, uh, also Puglia region, and uh, other uh, Italian and, and Croatian regions. And um, that, uh, the previous. third part of the... The previous, I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> that on the right, the, on the right, bicycle, like a bicycle kind of bicycle. Thing. Yes, yes, it's uh, rescuing from the mountains. Ah, rescue from okay, the mountains. Yeah, it's, really, uh, it's a really light uh, yes. thing that could be, I don't know, like uh, put like a backpack also. I understand. So when, when the yes. tourists uh, do stuck in, uh, in the mountains? Yes, yes, something. Injured, when they go injured climbing, in injured. The mountains, uh, yes, okay, yes, okay, like thank you for this. Yes. Okay. So the third, uh, maybe the, um, uh, also from the financial aspect and the capacities aspect, the most uh, uh, challenging part of the project was developing of the advanced training centers. We actually uh, had the uh, development of the uh, training centers on uh, three locations. Uh, one of them is uh, Advanced Training Center in Vucevica in Split Dalmatia County. You can see here the building which was uh, actually uh, built from nothing from the, from the field during the project. And uh, we are very proud of, the, uh, of, of this accomplishment. It is a very um, complex uh, facility. It consists of several buildings including the 
including the uh, polygons for training, classrooms, and uh, uh, special fields for exercises and trainings of the firefighting uh, services. Uh, this uh, facility has really a um, uh, good position in, in order to, uh, to capitalize the results and to, to build the new results on the, on the, existing, on the existing situation. Uh, to go on, uh, uh, the other location is uh, placed in uh, Dubrovnik Neretva County in Kula Norinska. It is a smaller facility, but it is also very important because of its uh, position on the, on the south of Croatia. And the third, uh, third location also in the network of uh, training centers is placed in Fabriano Belvedere in Marke region. It is also built and equipped by Marke region through a uh, fire spill project. So, uh, besides the equipment and, uh, and the building sites, uh, we also did a lot of training, exercises, exhibitions, and uh, things like this. Almost every partner who uh, purchased the, the equipment uh, had the obligation to, um, uh, to have exhibition of those equipment, which was held by all uh, relevant partners with uh, cross-border uh, contributions and uh, cetera. Uh, we organized a lot of trainings. The trainings also resulted with um, uh, joint cross-border modules in order to share the practices and uh, to transfer the knowledge uh, from both sides of Adriatic. Um, uh, the activation of citizens in uh, citizens' participatory process was also a very important this part really of, our, of our actions. Uh, we were very, really very well recognized in the, in, within the general public and within the uh, population of all ages, uh, made some publications for the kindergarten uh, and for the school. We also brought... Uh, Heroes of everyday life. Yes, huh? we brought the firefighters to them, which was also very, very uh, a happy moment for, happy for school moment. and uh, kindergarten yes. children. Yes. Um, we made uh, visibility uh, through different uh, city lights, uh, uh, billboards, uh, also uh, advertising on the um, uh, public transports, and uh, as I said, uh, made a lot of events in uh, raising awareness uh, uh, among the citizens in the programming area. So they learned um, more how to uh, yeah. How to yeah, how protect. To, how, how to be prepared. Prepared. Yes. So, uh, also uh, different publications in order to inform uh, stakeholders, emergency services, and um, all other uh, uh, relevant participants of the fire, uh, fire spill project. Uh, I won't take you, take you uh, long, uh, any longer. Uh, I could discuss the, the outputs or show the outputs uh, further on, but uh, we had even a really important uh, and really uh, well-recognized high-level conferences, which, was, which were also really present in the media since the uh, unfortunately, the disasters are something that are happening every day, so everyone is eager to, 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 to know uh, uh, anything about it. Uh, but just to stress out one more uh, output of the project, and that is uh, actually our partnership. Um, of course, we had our uh, challenges, internal and external challenges, to, to be honest. But uh, at the very end, uh, we, we, we managed to overcome them, and uh, we just started to warm up. We are ready for new projects, so I hope uh, it you, will... You're it will, warming up the yes, machines. Yes, yes. Good. <laughs> so it, uh, it, I think it will, it will really happen. Uh, we had a pandemic and lockdown yes. at the very beginning of the project, which uh, didn't make things any yes, easier. We just started, yeah, so, right, uh, right. Uh, so. But uh, to conclude, um, I think that all of us, uh, we can be really happy because I think we made uh, uh, our programming area with this project at least a bit safer. 
than it was at the, at the very beginning. So we can feel yes. a little bit safer than yes. before. And just one more, uh, one yes. more and, and really important thing. I would like to, to thank all the partnership for their engagement, for their sp support, for, for their uh, um, contribution to the project. I would like to thank especially to, to the JS team and to our ministry. We had really a, a, a good support. And uh, I would like to thank, thank to, to all of you for, for the understanding and the, for, for the patience. For, for the thank project. you, Helena. <laughs> it's nice to hear <laughs> your compliments to the work also of all of us because it makes us really proud, I think, everybody. So um, let's go to the last project, last but not least, <laughs> Andrea Torezan. Uh, Hello and good morning to you from the Project Marvelous. We, uh, we are so happy, I'm so happy to have you here today with us. Uh, your project is uh, super interesting as well. So I will, I will let you to introduce it to show the best achievements, the most important uh, project activities uh, that were many, many, many. Thanks. Thank you, Tia. Uh, of course, uh, the, the pleasure and the honor, it's a uh, mine one to be here with you today and to share the results of our project. Uh, as said, I'm Andrea Torezan, and uh, on behalf of uh, Arpa Veneto and the um, project manager of Mrs. Stefania Tesser, I'll be the honor to present you the results. So, going uh, into the details of the project, this is uh, uh, the main aim of the project. So, uh, we wanted to, take the, to, to tackle the problem of marine litter issue in uh, quite an holistic way, let's say. So here you can see some uh, of the issues that we identified at the beginning of the project. Of course, when we speak about marine litter, most of you will think about plastic issues. It's, of course, uh, the main, one of the main issues, but um, the different uh, litters that you can find into the sea and related to human activities are quite different. And uh, another important thing to think about it is that uh, marine litter is not created uh, directly into the sea, but most of them are related to land-based activities. Said that, uh, these are some uh, of the main output uh, that uh, we chose at the beginning of the project and that we achieved. So we were able to perform ten environmental friendly um, technological solution. Some of them you will see in the details with the pilot action. Some of them uh, are related also to some activities performed with citizens and schools. Uh, we were, uh, one of the targets was to collect 250,000 microplastic particles. We have implemented some uh, robots that are able to collect uh, microplastic. Of course, the aim was not to collect uh, the plastic, was to test the robots in order to have uh, uh, some support on the monitoring field. And of course, uh, to uh, spread what we have done. So to achieve uh, as many people as possible to share our message. This is uh, the project, uh, let's say in a nutshell. So we start with assessment. So we have done uh, a first coordination work between Italy and Croatia to try to understand if there were some difference on marine litter uh, monitoring. Uh, fortunately, there weren't so many. Uh, we just changed uh, something uh, on some microplastic um, analysis. Um, of course, monitoring is quite important because we need to know what we need to fight. Okay. Uh, awareness. So regarding the awareness, uh, so regarding marine litter, most uh, of the issues are really related to uh, awareness campaign, what the, the citizens are really doing the, during their life. Uh, regulation, so we had, uh, let's say, the luck uh, that within the implementation of the project, we have the implementation of the single-use pla single plastic directive, the Salvamare law in Italy. So we saw also this changing uh, in the legislative uh, perception. And of course, uh, uh, the treatment and the removal of uh, the marine litter from, of course, a circular perspective. Uh, so regarding the monitoring, uh, uh, our colleagues of ARPA Friuli Venezia Giulia implemented also this double tool with satellite analysis to uh, uh, find the hotspot uh, of the marine litter in the Adriatic Sea and uh, a numerical simulation that uh, with this video you can see that from a source of pollution you, uh, using uh, a numerical simulation, you can see where the uh, litter should be uh, beached. Okay. 
Uh, of course, uh, it's a simulation, so it's not perfect. Uh, have been uh, uh, tested and been uh, confirmed for some of the sites areas by the infield monitoring. Okay, so we work together, and will be uh, even more tested after the end of the project. So as you can see here, it's a little bit cut at the creation side, but believe me that uh, the uh, Italian rivers are strictly connected also to the Croatian coastline. Um, beside the monitoring activities, uh, we have worked uh, with the beach concessionaries because uh, we had a lack of data during the summer uh, season. So it's uh, quite impossible for a technician or a scientist to go in along the the, the seaside okay, during the summer oh. season and to collect the litter between, uh, between peoples. So uh, we have trained the beach concessionaries to do it for us. They have done it. Uh, uh, we're supposed to do it for one year. They ask it to do it the second years and even during the winter season because, of course, for them uh, it's uh, a huge topic and can be an issue. Okay? Um, and luckily for them, uh, some of the results were that uh, most of the litter found on the beach uh, during the summer season are left uh, by the same tourists that are using that beach. And some uh, solutions are quite easy because uh, where you cannot smoke uh, on the beach, uh, you will not find the cigarette butts on the beach. Okay? Or just to have uh, a, uh, a cap on the beans, a lid okay, on the beans, will avoid that seabirds or wind will spread what uh, was, at least for that one, correctly managed. Uh, we work with uh, schools. Of course, uh, uh, children of primary and secondary schools and even high school are more sensitive on this topic compared to us. Uh, uh, Nobody is, but uh, we were able to involve 1,400 school students in uh, all of the areas of Friuli Venezia Giulia, uh, Istria region, Dubrovnik, Neretva County, Emilia Romagna region, uh, Veneto region, of course, and Puglia region. Uh, we had a multidisciplinary approach. So uh, we had a frontal lecture, a gamification, uh, and uh, of course, uh, we went to, to, with them to clean up uh, not only the beach, but even uh, river banks uh, and uh, uh, the streets uh, to let them understand that their impact uh, during their life can, be can be harm the sea even uh, in the cities. This is some of the photos and the messages that uh, they left us. This bottle she said, uh, I should not be here. Uh, we should act now. And uh, uh, this is just uh, thank you to have teach us to save the planet. Of course, they were, it was maybe too much, but uh, uh, it was great for us to see this kind of message, message from the primary schools. This is a really nice uh, feedback. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. was really, really great and successful. Uh, there were some uh, uh, also um, exposition okay, on the work done and the photos taken uh, along the, the, the coast. Uh, and uh, you will be able to test later also these uh, 3D Googles. Uh, that is an immersive vision uh, of uh, our message that uh, I will say it later just to yeah that's uh, nice uh, don't forget that that in the in the in the coffee break uh, you can test these visors uh, and emerge yourself to this experience uh, okay okay which are right outside yeah <laughs> straight outside here uh, of course we do have uh, a YouTube page so please subscribe so our communication manager will be very happy uh, we do have uh, uh, a video for each pilot action as also output uh, and uh, you can also use the video produced for schools uh, the pilot action we had several pilot action that are aimed uh, mainly to prevent uh, collect and recycle the marine litter uh, let's start uh, to this action that will be performed in Veneto region will be uh, have been tested today or yesterday and uh, we will make uh, a video on this specific action on next Monday. Uh, this is a double uh, technology so there is uh, an artificial intelligence uh, camera that is able to identify and count the um, um, waste along the rivers that flows down okay, and uh, an interception uh, system that uh, uh, have been built with 19 wheels uh, that automatically uh, rotate uh, with the flows of the current, so they, not be, be, they don't need to be plugged to the currents. 
uh, to be able to collect and stop the, the waste before that they will reach the sea. This is uh, uh, a robot that have been implemented by University of Dubrovnik. I don't understand this number, so it's easier for us to see the video. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, an autonomous vehicle that can be used uh, in restricted areas like marinas or little bays to collect uh, some uh, uh, areas of accumulation of marine litter. Of course, they are able to avoid collisions with boats, uh, uh, rocks, and the harbors and then they will bring back uh, the waste to a collection area. It's like the robots that clean up your house autonomously. Beside microplastic, uh, the University of Bologna have implemented also this uh, autonomous vehicle that is able with these uh, three filters to collect uh, uh, the microplastic. Uh, this is one of the photos of the system. These are uh, the filters. And these are uh, the first results. Of course, it was tested near the shore, so most of it is sand, basically. But uh, the red arrows will uh, guide you to find the microplastic particles. Uh, no. This should be a video, but I'm not able to play it. Maybe you can. OK, thank you. So they try to test it with the, in waves condition because it's one of the situation where uh, you cannot actually use uh, efficiently uh, the manta net that it's used to uh, do the microplastic monitoring right now in order to understand if it's usable uh, even in a strong condition with the weather condition. Okay. Then we had uh, other two actions. One is uh, a collection with this uh, collector that is just a bigger sea bin that is uh, more common, uh, that have been done in the Puglia region. And the fishing for litter action performed in the Emilia Romagna region um, that they tested a modified net that should be catch more litter than fish. Okay, of course, uh, the, the, the testing is. Uh, uh, it was quite hard, they said, uh, but was uh, fruitful in most of the cases. They have done more than uh, 60 uh, tests with these uh, nets. Uh, of course, here, um, the activity performed by Institute Ruder Boscovich in uh, Rovigno. So here, they test the um, purification rate, the microplastic uh, purification rates of the muscles. Okay. Uh, in order to understand uh, if uh, the muscles in the environment can help us to collect the, the, the microplastic. Basically, uh, the animals were just living by their own. They, we just put a net underneath that. So no uh, animals were um, uh, used only for this purpose. And uh, to, to close uh, the circle, the paralysis, so what we, uh, we collected with the pilot action, was sent to a paralysis plant, and uh, um, we tested the subproducts, so the syngas, the oil, and uh, the, the char, the biochar, okay? So uh, that's all from my side. Thank you very much. That's good. It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. We love your project, uh, very interesting, uh, fishing for litter, or these topics uh, connected with uh, marine litter. And I think that with visors, will we be able to see uh, how does this, uh, I'm not sure, it's, so it's a question. How, the, how, is, uh, how is a clean sea, how does it work, uh, uh, so which are the microplastics? With the visor, we will yeah. be able to see uh, something that uh, you asked to said to us today, so our vision and the message for you. But uh, really, when we were making uh, this, thinking about how, what to make uh, with this uh, 3D vision, so we thought about it a lot. But at the end, uh, we choose a topic that is quite mainstream, but unluckily for us, uh, uh, is not uh, really applied by all. So it's, uh, if you take something, OK? a plastic bottle, okay? So is uh, uh, the item by itself the problem or it's the usage that we do it the problem, okay? So uh, within the videos, you can see two people that are just walking along the street. One is just throwing the bottle in a river, okay? And the other one in the bin. And then you can choose the one 
the which one one to follow. Uh, the one that uh, have been thrown into the environment, you will follow the bottle up to the sea, uh, the beach, and then uh, will become microplastic at the end. And the one that is thrown into the bin, you will follow it uh, into a waste management plant and a recyclable uh, recycled plant up to uh, be back to a plastic bottle. So this is the, one of the main aim of the video and the message that we want to share with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And the, and the rest of they will discover themselves. Thank you, Andrea. Thanks to all the projects of the first slot. Uh, Renata, would you like to introduce uh, something now? I'm not sure. Oh, okay, it works. <laughs> So, yeah, now we have a coffee time. <laughs> uh, please use the time uh, for networking. I, I think that we, we, we heard that uh, there were so many interesting results and we, we see so many complementary things. I think the networking, uh, uh, the coffee can be used really for good networking. So we will see in a half of hour, 30 minutes. It's okay? Now? <laughs> Uh, so I would like to ask you all to take your seats and uh, I hope you uh, had a good break and now you are ready for the new session with Thea. Thea, you can just continue with uh, your session and with the new guests I assume. don't know if everybody has uh, taken their seats, your seats, uh, thanks uh, to the projects again from the first slot. Uh, and now I would like to invite my projects uh, from the second slot, uh, if they would like to take place. We have uh, Take It Slow from the uh, region of Emilia Romagna, Mrs. Verica Diamanti, and we have Cascade, Daniela Maric Pankuchen. Uh, Argos, Luca Chiodini, also from uh, Regione Emilia Romagna. Welcome, welcome. And uh, we have uh, Susport, Veronica Carli from uh, Port of Trieste. And we have Frame Sport, uh, Mr. Paolo, uh, Pier Paolo Campostrini. Thank you. You can sit down, take your seats, doesn't matter how do you sit down the order and of course I, as i said before mimosa is not today with us but we have some message from them so okay wonderful we continue in a good mood so <laughs> three women and two men welcome to our table, our fun table, because we are having so much fun now after you had so much work to do. <laughs> and uh, uh, I have a pleasure to, um, to have uh, Mrs. Diamanti, and uh, that she will introduce uh, the project Take It Slow, really interesting project on uh, culture and tourism and so on, but I won't take your words, I will give you the words to introduce. If you would like to use this microphone, I can give it to you, or that one, suit yourself. Okay. Yes. Okay, perfect. Can you hear? Yes. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Here in presence and uh, online. And uh, let me introduce to you the project uh, Take It Slow, Smart and Slow Tourism, Supporting Adriatic Heritage for Tomorrow. We are the project partner Emilia Romagna region. And uh, I just would like to say one thing, because I live in one of the cities that have been uh, flooded by the river water in these days in Emilia Romagna region. And I wish the inhabitants of my town had been involved and trained in the previous project we have uh, heard about, <laughs> because it was needed. <laughs> it, it could have been useful. Yes, a lot, definitely. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so now we know uh, more things that we know before, and we hope that it won't happen again, these disasters, of course, but uh, we need to work on mitigation and be prepared when it, if it should happen anytime. So thank you for this observation, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so here we are about the context 
why they get slow started. Um, the coastal areas are facing the following problems, too big uh, of seasonality, too many people coming uh, in already developed tourist areas, lack of valorization of the natural and cultural heritage in tourist industry, not enough promotion of an Adriatic region as a unique territory. The action took place uh, at the Italian and Croatian coastal areas, um, to be precise, in six uh, Italian and five Croatian regions. Later at the end, you will see the partnership. The policy sector is uh, territorial development, and um, we have been helping people uh, uh, about the, their lack of knowledge and understanding of sustainable tourism, and their lack of promotion and marketing in products and service development, technology transfer, social and eco-innovation networking. Uh, which were the expectations? Uh, the, main pro the main promise was to uh, uh, foster establishment, management, and promotion of uh, the Adriatic region as a smart, sustainable, green, and slow tourism destination based on accessible, protected, valorized, and promoted joint natural and cultural heritage of islands, of coastal, of inland, and of the rural Adriatic area. The results uh, we achieved, uh, we have improved uh, the preservation, valorization, interpretation, and promotion of cultural and natural heritage, as I said, of inland, coastal, and inland of the project area. Actually, we have been training more than 200 people, stakeholders, through the different kind of workshops and on sustainable tourism. And uh, they have participated, um, and we, to uh, study trips, where the main idea was to exchange knowledge and experiences. We've also increased integration and strengthened collaboration between key actors engaged in promotion of natural and cultural heritage at local, regional, national, and program level. Uh, more than 100 actors have been involved in uh, the cross-border par partnership platform of uh, scientific, private, and public sector. We've also improved understanding, participation, implementation, and promotion of eco-level green certification by the local beneficiaries. Uh, we have realized more than 10 eco-green certificates. Finally, we have improved accessibility of natural and cultural heritage destinations. We have worked together with the main stakeholders, scientific, private, and public sector from various fields, which means agriculture, tourism, cultural and natural heritage. The tools, uh, smart specialization strategy, uh, thanks to the smart strategic framework and method methodology, we have created a strategy um, uh, marketing destination plan for the Adriatic region. A strategic framework based, as I said, on smart specialization for management, uh, cross-border tourist destination through digitalization, cultural industries, and promotion of cultural and natural heritage. Uh, now I'm going to show um, a few main outputs we have reached, and uh, yes, we, we start sure. with the, uh, um, we are in Croatia, Sibenikni County, Mortar Island, and uh, here it has been realized an open-air museum. They arranged pedestrian educational train equipped with interactive installation, included the archaeological site of Colentum, you are going to see it, uh, here it is, <laughs> from the Roman times, so you can uh, see how it used to be and how it is now, the site. Then, uh, this is uh, uh, Istria region, Momian, in the uh, House of Castles in Momian. There is now a virtual museum and a creative center for the promotion of the Northern Adriatic cultural heritage. And this means uh, the cultural root of all Istrian castles, uh, which have been printed in 3D and written in braille for people with special needs. 
And now we should switch to Emilia-Romagna region. Here we are, <laughs> uh, Valmarecchia. Uh, here we have installed e-bike charging and maintenance columns uh, with foot pump tools uh, for quick maintenance operations, sockets for recharging uh, uh, e-bikes and then electronic devices. We have pos position information signs on cycle path. And we have restored the wharf by the Lake Andreuccio up in the hill by removing architectural barriers. And now we are in Marche region, the monastery of Fontavellana. Here it has been created a center to preserve the cultural heritage of the Camaldolese monks. Uh, and here a presentation and animation digital tools uh, to highlight uh, the, the deep connection uh, between spirituality, history, and the natural world. But some problems we had. <laughs> the procurement processes and high inflation, especially from the Croatian side, but also in Italy. The bureaucracy is always a problem, of course. <laughs> the involvement of the local community, citizen, local tourism operator, SMEs, uh, they weren't used to be uh, involved, uh, and uh, it, has, it is a start. And uh, the significant increase in prices. As you know, we started the project uh, within the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, there, is, there, is, there is the war in o Ukraine, and um, also the passage from the Croatian to the European money has been a difficulty, especially for the Croatian partners. Um, about which is uh, the main added value uh, of this cross-border cooperation is the possibility for stakeholders from both sides of the Adriatic to work together to discuss problems they are facing in their industries, to think about new sustainable solutions to present their work and to exchange experience, to travel together to another European re region to learn from their experience, their best practices. Thus, we can say that the main added value is in human resources. As I told you, this is the partnership, both sides of the Adriatic. You can see, but there's the water inside, the Adriatic Sea. <laughs> and uh, so you see Dubrovnik, Neretva region, Split, Almasha, Shibnik, Nink region, Sada region, Istria region, and the Italian regions of Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, Veneto, Emilia Romagna, Marche, Abruzzo, Molise, Puglia. And finally, our slogan, embrace the pace of Adriatic heritage experience. A project with uh, 12 partners, whose vision is to make natural and cultural heritage a leverage for sustainable and more balanced territorial de development. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. I saw that you have created on the website different kinds of catalogs uh, for, from different sectors that we take the opportunity to invite uh, our stakeholders to check them out because they are very nice, uh, very nicely full of contents and can be found on your project website. So, thanks a lot for having showed us these uh, amazing uh, pictures from all the pilot uh, uh, areas that, of course, uh, if uh, anybody of our stakeholders uh, goes, can see <laughs> and, and visit. So, thanks a lot for your contribution, for take it slow. And uh, now, with Daniela, we'll present you the next project, uh, Cascade. And, uh, of course, Daniela knows uh, something more about the content or the technical content or the problems you have encountered at the beginning uh, and how did you work. So we want to know how did you work and what happened then. Thanks. Thank you for your introduction. So Cascade is one of the projects with very, very long title. For this, we did not even put it. So it was basically about the coastal and marine waters integrated monitoring system for ecosystem protection and management. Uh, it was a big group of the partners, and our main focus was on a biodiversity. 
you already hear a lot about managing uh, the extreme events, managing the floods, and we all know that the Adriatic Sea is a very vulnerable sea, very vulnerable ecosystem. Being the northernmost part of the Mediterranean and so close, shared by the countries of Italy and Croatia, it's a sea where we can see global climate change very fast, faster than the other region of the Mediterranean. And we, of course, have uh, many pressures. So we have increased coastal pollution, we have fisheries and agriculture, we have uh, flavial inputs because we have a river Po, which is the second biggest river in the Mediterranean, also smaller rivers, urban discharge, tourism, and we, as I already said, we can really observe the global climate change happening in situ on the place. We also have a big uh, traffic. So with this uh, project objectives of uh, Cascade project was the increase of marine knowledge through the consolidation of the inland and marine waters monitoring. So we work on the sea and also on these tra transitional zones like sand dunes and so on through the communication activities and involvement of the local communities. We had a very big, um, a very big uh, aim to communicate with a lot of partners and a lot of stakeholders. Project objectives also were to address uh, the environmental uh, vulnerability and to find out which are our problems. We wanted to find some scientific-based restoration methodologies or some soft restoration methodologies, and I will show you more in the next slides. And we also uh, wanted to support the protection of marine ecosystem. Everyone heard most probably in last years that some of the very uh, typical species for a Mediterranean, like this pinna shell, are dying, that there are just several of them that survive. So we, in, uh, in this project, we were uh, studying them and monitoring them as well. Uh, we had many, many dissemination activities, but I would concentrate on uh, Festival of the Adriatic Sea, which was a cross-border event uh, happening last year, in which all the partners together organized 77 events in 24 different locations. Here you can see just some examples of them, for instance, the, the tours in the natural protected area, Natura 2000 terrace. Then we had the action of cleaning the Adriatic for the future generation, which were together with some other strategic projects like Marles, which was uh, you heard before, where the divers help us cleaning the bottom, and we were this litter collecting it and uh, categorizing it and also producing data for the other, uh, for the other projects uh, from this uh, same uh, program. Cross-border event, uh, for instance, we tried to involve schools um, in a board game in which they were planning some future scenarios and how they could solve the problems. We also had many workshops, and here you can see a picture just of one of them, which was going on in Emilia-Romagna. And from the other dissemination activities, we had uh, local events which were organized in our pilot area. We had uh, 11 pilot area and all of our partners were very, very um, uh, working very hard on this uh, dissemination activities. So we have uh, guided tours and scuba diving. We have a laboratory and educational activity for schools. We have seminars, we have workshops, uh, scientific trainings. We also have a game for school and many, many others for which I don't have time now to speak. So here you can see some of the events that were organized. Uh, for instance, scuba diving from Regione Puglia, then uh, activities for students where the students were visiting these natural uh, protected areas and uh, so on. Interesting scuba diving. Can I yes, interview? actually we had the scuba diving, like discovering the biodiversity by yeah. scuba diving, and yes. we involved the students and we involved the stakeholder, someone who wanted to participate. Yes. Of course, you have to have a di diving license, but yes. for the students, it was uh, very close to the shore, yes. so they could have like a try it without the diving license mm -hmm. to see if this is made for them or not. And this was uh, the school. After that, we had a lecture on Cascade Biodiversity. We showed mm -hmm. them the species that are. Uh, 
uh, endangered species that are entering our ecosystem that might be a threat for our ecosystem. And we show them something about the biodiversity and then they have this dive. Yes. And it was very, very nice. Event. How the invasive species look like, yes. uh, really. Yeah, How and they, they, look. They, they You uh, can touch them exactly. with a the hand, exactly. Uh, exactly. Not just... This was, okay, and thanks. we also had this... Um, a scientific trainings on which we always tried to give this uh, accent to this what they can observe because as I said we are talking about biodiversity and if you see a fish or a crab or some uh, gelatinous organism that is entering the ecosystem everyone can see that we had very nice collaboration with the local community last year when we had a uh, gelatinous bloom, so they were sending us the photos with the geolocation, and we um, had more than 900 um, uh, these photos with the medusa, and then we were producing graphs and things like that. Well, that's very interesting. Yes, <laughs> it was like a kind of a call to action uh, from the from the sea. The <laughs> the tourists yeah. and the local community they. Uh, like to feel useful yes. and when you show them that their information is valid for us yes. because we can't be on every beach on yes. every port in the Adriatic in one day and there are hundreds of people which are especially in the summer months yes. so it's a very nice collaboration mm -hmm. with the uh, with the tourists and oh, then yes. of course through the social media we are uh, giving this information further. very interesting yes thank you uh, we had of course events for the stakeholders in which, for instance, we had this webinar of restoration of to supporting uh, endangered species, and uh, we also wanted to show them uh, in which way they can use our data that we are producing. I will show you later on, but you already saw in Andrea Valentini's presentation the big buoys that we uh, purchased and that we put into the Northern Adriatic. So we were showing them how to use those data, how to uh, use sea currents, uh, how to use the temperature, the salinity, and so on, because they can have really, an, it's an advantage for them, because it's the, in real time, online, and can, they can follow the situation on the sea before they decide if they are going to fish today or not. This is something really interesting too. Yes, and here's the picture of one of those, uh, of those uh, workshops that we held with fishermen and the colleague which is working with this jellyfish, how is explaining them what their data are actually producing to us. So how to use the data and what can you do with the Yes, how the our data, data can, how to be, yeah. uh, can be used by stakeholders, mm -hmm. not just by scientists, not just for models, but used by a stakeholder. By stakeholders. Yes. That's very interesting and useful. Uh, we had other webinars which were uh, online, on, for instance on this one, uh, they were uh, organized by our LP Regione Puglia, there was a huge number of uh, professionals such as architects, geologists, uh, archaeologists, biologists and so forth. And uh, at the end we had two final events which were very well um, perceived, one in Lecce for the Italian partners and one in Rovin um, for the Croatian partners. On the, the boat, there were more than uh, 160 person in, uh, in person, 80 and 80 approximately, and this was uh, also very nice a way to show our results. We give them a bit longer yes. than eight minutes, so <laughs> to show Why them our... Why did you <laughs> decide to organize the two final events and not one cross-border event? One cross-border, two final. Ah, okay. One summer school. Okay. And those are the location in which we were organizing all these events. All so you can events. see, those numbers are not yet final. We yes. had, until this day, but they are not all the event follow-up sent in, 221 events, more than 5,000, almost 500 people involved, and more than 3,000 students. Uh, the summer school, this was for undergraduate students going on in Brindisi last year. It was uh, very nice, 20 participants, 17 teachers for six days, and also we had this visit to Torre Guaceto. And then we had also a website which was cre created by our partner CMHC for Ocean uh, Literacy Toolkit for Adriatic Ocean Literacy, on which you can find about um, uh, quids, videos, web docs, educational material, and webinars, and the technical activities. So uh, this was basically the the biggest work, not just dissemination, but this was the biggest part of the work. So we wanted to uh, monitoring system implementation in di di different pilot areas, information platform, and restoration actions. 
So, for the equipment and monitoring system, this is uh, our buoy, which is uh, situated in front of the rowing, one nautical mile in front of the rowing. This buoy was co-financed by Cascade, by Adriklim, so we put yes. together two strategic projects because this was very uh, big uh, purchase. It was more than one million euro and two other projects. Mm -hmm. And we uh, installed uh, all the modern sensors on it. So uh, it has a, a weather sensor forecast, it had uh, a temperature salinity CTD, but beside that there is also an instrument which is measuring phytoplankton on a daily basis, making up pictures, analyzing the community, because as I said, we wanted to work on a biodiversity. Mm -hmm. And we were working in the Northern Adriatic pilot on a hidden biodiversity. So we were using also new methodologies like molecular barcoding. And we really find out some new um, things, uh, many, many new species which are uh, making part of our uh, phytoplankton community and which were not found before. So, okay. uh, beside our boys, there were um, other uh, instruments, for instance, this for, um, which was bought by Regione Puglia. Then there was this morning uh, uh, another boy which was uh, purchased by uh, Torre Guaceto, also for continuous monitoring of uh, uh, phys physical and biogeochemical parameters. Then some of our partners were measuring sea currents because they were in a pilot area, which is very important. There's a small river coming in then to see the change in the currents and what is going on. And we, of course, produce this information platform where you can find the information about our monitoring in our, uh, our pilot areas, but also the models, how we, what we expect that will happen in the future. And we had the restoration actions. Mm -hmm. I would say that this is one of the, like the cherry on the top of the cake, because some of our partners wanted to restore endangered ecosystem or lost habitats, and we were working uh, in um, in the southern Adriatic, so uh, close to the Nin, Miljašićaruga, but also Cetina River estuary, and there they were concentrating on the Spina nobilis, which is completely disappeared. We have, I guess, in this moment, 18 living specimens, so they were making. Um, uh, collectors, where they were collecting the small ones, and these small ones, pina, which were, I don't know, uh, one centimeter large, then they were supported to the aquarium, and then they were fed, and to see if we will have possibility to grow them. It's still Restoring. very challenging, okay. it's still very challenging, but I would say that the good thing is that those that are still living are producing the young ones. So there's the future for pina for sure. And for the one that were found alive, they put these cages and they mm -hmm. try to close them so that they will not be uh, distracted with the anchoras or with the yes. other activities in the, the sea human, uh, to protect them. Okay. Every one okay. of them has a name. Yes. Yeah. On every one of them <laughs> was a post on Facebook. They are very popular. We will among check it out on the Facebook uh, yes. <laughs> to yes. get to know better. And yes. then we have the literacy yes. platform you can see the here way one. we can uh, the, the, quiz to test our knowledge yes. afterwards, right? Yes. Uh, I will Thanks. tell you something about that as well. So mm. here's the one you can see the diver mm. with the living specimen in the uh, seagrass meadow. Seagrass meadows are also habitats that are very under pressure, and there were many other interacts that were installing CISPAS and other that were installing the special moorings in Croatia in some, uh, in some buoys, so that we are not throwing an Ankara, but that we are using this safe mooring, so uh, we have to protect them. And due to the climate change and to the raising of the temperature, the seagrass is not able to grow in this normal cycle, so this is also a big threat. And we all know Poseidonia and Simodose are really important for home Mediterranean. Yes, we have uh, and this is also, this is the first case, uh, uh, restoration action of a brown algae, which my colleagues in Rovin did. Brown algae, Fucus virsoides, is endemic algae of the northern Adriatic. It is the algae which is growing in this um, area of uh, where's um, Plimaiosica, uh, sea tides. Tide, so so tide. a part of the day it's at the dry, the part of the day is submerged, and we notice that it's disappearing. So my colleagues started to put it on the artificial substrate, 
grow it a bit in the lab, and then they introduce it again into the habitat to see it's if we can do the reforestation yeah, of the years. algae. So this is one of them. And, you know, we thank I you have to finish. Have I'm, to I'm at the end. <laughs> I'm almost at the end. This was the restoration action of Spartina, which was done here in Italy. And uh, basically, this is my slogan for the end. Uh, you are what you see. Or the sea. We like that. <laughs> we had some similar but different uh, slogans uh, from the other projects as well. Uh, yes. Uh, from uh, at, the, at Swim, that was involving the sea. But it, they're quite effective. So yes. yes. Thank you for restoring our habitat. Yes, we are trying to work hard on that. Thank it's you. Not easy, but thank, it's you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. It's an effort. Yes. But you, you've done it. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Daniela. And uh, let's go to another project. Uh, okay. We have an Algos project. You want to go start, uh, Luca? <laughs> go ahead. No, uh, it seems <laughs> that are looking the, forward. the issues... We are looking uh, forward, too. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome and thank you. No, 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 welcome. Uh, I suppose to be in Dubrovnik, uh, but uh, I just uh, passed by before to go there. We have the final event in Dubrovnik, uh, so Argos will, uh, will end up now, but it will not really end up uh, uh, to this month. Uh, it will go on, uh, I hope. Uh, some issues that were already tackled by Daniela before, uh, because they are... I don't want to say it's quite similar projects in some aspects. <clears throat> For example, but what, what are the differences uh, with our projects uh, that Daniela showed us before? Uh, <clears throat> For example, uh, Argos is mostly mainly on fisheries and aquaculture activities for sustainability, helped by a scientific uh, committee. Uh, the committee is AAC, uh, Adriatic Advisory. Uh, committee, but uh, with the aim to sustain uh, and preserve natural resources in the frame of maritime special planning. Uh, uh, maritime special planning is always, it's, uh, uh, I was looking at a survey in Brest uh, a few days ago, uh, is uh, the issue that is most uh, interesting uh, to the public, uh, specific public, when we talk about general public but in the public or stakeholders, by the time special planning is the most uh, interesting. Uh, and the less interesting are public policy. It was a survey, but, but uh, it's a pity because uh, public policy is, uh, and uh, my time special planning, they are really chained uh, because uh, the, uh, govern it's the government, uh, are regional authorities, uh, ministries uh, and uh, countries who, who implement uh, the maritime special planning. Uh, so, uh, ah, uh, I'm, I'm used to touch. So. No, it doesn't work. Ah, <laughs> this one. Uh, Argos born. Uh, one of the main reasons was uh, capitalization of our, our previous, uh, previous project, uh, like Dori, Cosi. It was uh, Dori was a uh, capitalization of uh, Cosi as well. But uh, Dori, the, the uh, the aim of Dori and aim even of Gargos, uh, uh, institution of, uh, of uh, uh, marine protected areas. Uh, marine protected areas also, in the, if we want to even subscribe the, the charter of, uh, uh, ocean, of restore ocean and waters by 2030, it's really uh, the main issue uh, protect uh, the sea because um, we cannot tackle the climate change without the help uh, of uh, ocean and seas, uh, because the oxygen comes from there, uh, the pollution goes there. Also, the cycle of waters, it's a, uh, it's a very long uh, uh, stalk we can uh, do about that. Um, anyway, our aim is to create that marine uh, protected areas out of uh, uh, Po River, uh, between Po River and the Istia region. To protect, uh, for example, in, in that area is the soil, because we discovered that the soil usually uh, go there to, for the production. It's an nursery area for soils. Uh, it's a very important species for Adriatic. Uh, commercial and uh, for biodiversity and so on. But I just want to go, to go on, uh, because... Uh, 
Please was, was. Uh, what was uh, what was, was have you managed uh, now we are going to see if you managed uh, to you said th that was the um, that was the main uh, issue of our Beh, because uh, uh, Dodi it's over uh, I mean uh, ended up uh, in 2019, and Argos uh, started in uh, really with the pandemic on 1st of April 2020. Uh, we lost some time, effectively. Uh, anyway, uh, we are hoping uh, to, to, to have these marine protected areas. are so important. Uh, it's enough to take a look at uh, the, the pit of Poma, Pomo. Uh, Pomo Pit, uh, after 30 years, uh, really, it was really fruit of cooperation uh, between uh, Italy and Croatia. Uh, it's uh, between Split and uh, Abruzzo region, it's a w quite a wide area. And now, that mm, because marine protected areas, they create a lot of conflicts, especially with fishermen. Uh, but then fishermen are happy now, because they fish uh, at the border of the marine protected area, they fish uh, much better uh, Fish. Uh, so the catches are, are uh, the fish are bigger, are more healthy, are more tasty. Uh, at least they say like that. Uh, so after 30 years, was uh, institute, and now we are opening as well. Like in Torre Guaceto, there is another marine protected areas as well. These are uh, our pilot action as well. Oh, but, uh, this is institution of uh, AAC. It's our committee that uh, is our committee, and uh, it's. Uh, named by every partner, one, uh, uh, two, one substitute, one, no, 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 go on. Go on specific objective, of course. Uh, mm, another issue was the collecting of data, even Daniel before, uh, she talked about collecting data. It's very important because you cannot make research without uh, a lot of data. Big data are so important, uh, even for machine learning later, or for the uh, as uh, the smart specialization strategy. Now, it's not S3 anymore, it's S4 plus uh, uh, is going on and things are moving. Uh, so, uh, data is uh, one of the specific objective of Argos uh, because it's so important for the sense because Argos uh, is a scientific project. It's so difficult to explain sometimes or even what we are doing because it's so, it's so, it's so technical, so it's good for biologists uh, many times. Hmm? So you collected the data? To see, see, we are collecting. We made even a, an infrastructure in uh, Rovigno. Uh, I will show you later the picture. I have many slides with many pictures, mm -hmm. yes. but I don't have time. Yes, you don't have <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem. Uh, and um, anyway, we, we made that, uh, that center for collecting data in, in Rovigno. In Rovigno. So it's uh, at disposal all uh, partners of the Adriatic. Uh, Facing the Adriatic. Okay, let's go on uh, because uh, ah, there, there was another, uh, the other, uh, the other objective was the main was uh, the pilot action, uh, just a package of pilot action regarding fishermen, op aquaculture operators, especially with uh, tra uh, transborder meeting, uh, with exchange of best practice, let's say, and then. Uh, there were even studies uh, in these uh, pilot actions. Uh, I will show you later. Even uh, we find um, Argos financed even uh, infrastructures uh, like uh, uh, I never know, but I, I will show you the picture later. Mm, no, by target groups, uh, we go like it's not important. These were gadgets uh, we made. Uh, so I like that on your project. Uh, huh? uh, I saw that you have. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. You can. You involve a lot, a lot of, uh, a, a, a lot of uh, partners external to your, uh, to your project. A lot of. Uh, ah yes, yes. Yeah, uh, we interact with uh, even other programs uh, like yeah. Romed, uh, mm, but not only Romed, even Europe. Uh, we try, we try to put Argos wherever we can. You put it wherever you could, yeah, yes. yeah, so, and that you have participated to all the fairs, <laughs> you could. So it's no, especially. And then this is a good, this is a good um, also example of being uh, on the ground, participating, uh, 
be no, over there when yeah. something happens to search also for the other no, because, collaborations. Uh, the issues, uh, they, uh, they are talking in AMD, Open Maritime Days, in uh, Store Ocean Waters. Uh, uh, I participated even in the Blue Gloss Community Group uh, that was a Euromed program. Pro, they accepted us. Before we started Smart Fish and then with Argos, yes. I just proposed what I have in my pocket. So, uh, so, um, and it was very interesting because uh, there's a really exchange uh, ideas. Uh, you can have many ideas uh, to tackle uh, this uh, climate change. Good. Not only climate change. We go on. Hello. This was uh, our conferences in, uh, for example, in uh, uh, in Pordenone for Aqua Farm uh, in the other. Uh, it was recently. Uh, there are scientific conferences, uh, so maybe for general public, are not really so suitable. Uh, say, boy. Well, of course, we the, participated in fairs like level. coffee. It's very important. Very important. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, let's pass let's, on. Anyway, let's say something very, very quickly about the very governance. Very quickly, very quickly. Uh, if I miss something, eh? <laughs> yeah. governance frame figures, uh, 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 ecco, for example, this uh, is the, um, uh, the laboratory we that Argos, not we. The Argos uh, financed uh, in split. Uh, it's a laboratory disposal uh, all, all all partners for the elaboration of data as well, and the other one. Uh, recently opened uh, in Rovigno uh, on uh, 25 or uh, 26 of May, for example. Well, no, it's basically making process, it's important. You know, well, there's no time for What fish. happened here in Allora. this decision making? Uh what was decided? <laughs> eh? You did a lot of decision making. Yes, of course. We, yeah. we make a decision. We make the AIC Council, of course, is the one oh. who, who prepare and publish the guidelines, uh, hoping that somebody will uh, over, they pick it, uh, they pick it up. We, of course, uh, uh, we cannot uh, give orders, but we. We give guidelines uh, just for, for example, institution of uh, marine, uh, marine protected areas uh, for uh, some species uh, in danger. The, we have the, the, the biggest issue is uh, aliens for me, the alien species. They're really disrupting the, the food the, chain. Yes. Uh, it's a disaster. Eh? Uh, for example, this was uh, in Siena of Ancona. Our, uh, it was the first cross-board meeting with fishermen and aquaculture. We were even... Uh, Improvement of agricultural operator behaviors uh, uh, seems, but it was a, a long, was few days, and uh, it was not only one day. Uh, this, uh, uh, this, um, this equipment, uh, uh, I try a few times to understand uh, how it works, but I cannot tell you. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's mostly about uh, aquaculture. So it's about, uh, it's a nurse, it's a kind of nurse, it's a kind of make plankton, uh, it makes a lot of things. Uh, it's, uh, because it, over there you have you have had also the, the pilot areas for the testing of something. Yeah, in fact, this project. is a pilot, see, see, fact, pilot action. In fact, uh, I reached the yes. pilot action. Yes. Uh, well, this was a group. Uh, to, uh, yes. uh, uh, what's up? What's, what's next, what's Argos? Next? Uh, in the last seconds. Uh, so the Adriatic Advisory Committee, of course, uh, will be institutionalized, yes. I hope, uh, Medac style. Like the MEDAC, uh, it's that uh, committee, that council for Mediterranean uh, uh, area. Uh, we I would see. like to be more specific on, uh, on Adriatic, for example. And then uh, the project must uh, leave an autonomous socioeconomic database uh, linked to the world of fishing and Adriatic aquaculture, uh, but only through its capitalization and a constant uh, future commitment uh, to updating this information will be able to affect the support indication and line guidance from the, the Adriatic Advisory Committee. Uh, this is the old, uh, I, I forgot to translate. Uh, what is the, the inheritance of Argos? Uh, the impact on territory was uh, that laboratory in, uh, of your office split, uh, that house uh, that will process data. Uh, we have um, uh, also in Trieste where submerged uh, FAD, uh, it's a fishing aggregated devices. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it creates an area uh, with barriers, but not barriers, there are holes, where uh, fish can get inside and then they can have reproduction, they can reproduce themselves. Um, so and can be protected by the other dangerous species, especially aliens, or even by fishermen sometimes. Um, 
These are in Brest, uh, where in Eas, uh, in Rimini, we make many video pills, uh, usually that we post on our on our website. Yes, because I saw uh, that you use a lot of uh, social media. Which social is media, we use a lot. Of, uh, for example, yeah, we super went. Super uh, enhanced we, uh, now in this period, uh, next programming period. Uh, <laughs> European Commission often repeats this to us. And certainly, I can see that from the results of this project, you said to me it's a project a little bit uh, scientific, but it's it built upon uh, Dory, it built upon also step by step by step. By step. Uh, we will have another one. Yeah. Right? So yeah, sure, what what I had the the time and uh, the opportunity to analyze, uh, I think that we are on a very good track to have uh, a better fish quality in the Adriatic Sea and the better by protecting stock our sea. Pret Protect. protected uh, areas uh, and uh, and also the mu the mussels and all this uh, aquaculture oh selfish yes yes yeah, so that's really we interact a lot for example here in uh, Leucate it's very famous in south of France uh, France for uh, nurseries uh, for oysters and uh, and shells for example this was yes. in Barcelona. It's a very important fair for uh, for seafood, uh, for fish in general. This was the conference uh, in Zara, for example. Yeah. That was in Barcelona. Uh, this was in Siloci. European Maritime Day. I know that you are participating Again, always. This was uh, storing uh, ocean waters. Uh, there were the Stati Generali della Pesca. Mm -hmm. And this was uh, the Blue Ghost community. Mm -hmm. I was in, in Patras. Uh, just to introduce uh, what Emilia Romagna is doing for the uh, economy, for example. Like that. Don't forget. Then we, uh, in Murcia, where we signed a media alliance, uh, an alliance with the Romad uh, program, for example. Don't forget to uh, invite us uh, next that, uh, time. No, I see that uh, to, <laughs> the time is really over. Uh, 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 to, to taste this, uh, the quality of the fish. Huh? That to, is important. To, to fish must be good and healthy. Whether yes, before yes, and yes. after is better. After exactly. Argos. This is our partnership, as you can see, our most institutional uh, partner, the Zoni and the uh, Zupani Conte uh, counties, uh, in uh, also IOF and uh, CNR of Ancona and ministries. So, mostly institutional uh, partners. Thank That's you, all. Luca. Partnership. Thank you so much. The time is coming. <laughs> Thank, you. Ago. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, quickly, uh, we go in Trieste. Yes. Okay, Veronica, please, the floor is Thank yours. You. you can present your project yes. and your so, achievements. Good morning, my good name morning. is Veronica Carli. I am from the Port Authority of Trieste, and I, uh, we are the lead partner in SUSPORT project. SUSPORT means sustainable ports. So we are going to talk about maritime transport in the cross-border area where ports face common challenges. The positive ones are to ensure its competitiveness, to guarantee smooth uh, traffic flows between them, because the same ship has to go to different ports, not only in Italy, not only in Croatia, but also at cross-border level. And in this scenario, uh, all the ports uh, have another important challenge, is the reduction of CO2 emissions. Why is uh, decarbonization so important? Because maritime transport is the most sustainable way for transporting goods. However, ports operation produce CO2 emissions, and most of the ports are near cities, for example, Trieste or Rijeka, they are surrounded by the city, we are in the city center, we can say. And pollution does not stop at the borders, does not stop at the borders of the port, and does not stop at the borders of the nations, of the states, so it's at cross-border level. And when we started with SUS port, uh, we realized that there were no common mitigation measures, and that this type of challenge needs something more than a local uh, approach. Uh, cooperation is needed because uh, uh, decarbonization and CO2 emissions uh, have a cross-border character, so they need a cross-border approach, they need a cross-border cooperation. So here is the reason why of SUSPORT, uh, 16 project partners, we came together, we make a team to tackle together decarbonization challenges in this cross-border area. And in these 16, you can find research institutes, universities, uh, traffic institutes, but the most important information is that here in this number, you can find all the port authorities from Italy and Croatia. So 
we started first of all by jointly defining a common methodology for the CO2 emissions analysis because re we realized that we have completely different criteria, so also the data that we have were not comparable. So here we use also the results from other projects and then we implement in the SUS port. Then we could make the joint analysis of CO2 emissions and then next phase was very interesting because we have to exchange our experiences, our best practices, uh, um, maybe something that is good in my port is also good in your port. And we also analyze the best practices and the pilot actions implemented in other ports, also outside the program area. And then we finally could make joint cross-border action plan. Uh, which was translated in a joint implementation of pilot actions. What does it mean? That at the same time, the ports in Italy and Croatia implemented pilot actions that were defined in a cross-border strategy, in a cross-border action plan. So, for example, we uh, replaced the uh, lighting systems in the ports with LED bulbs, which are more sustainable or uh, we put our photovoltaic systems on the roofs of our buildings uh, moreover, we invest in e-mobility. We purchase electric uh, uh, vehicles, which is also very important for our operations. And then we did cold ironing studies. Uh, cold ironing for the ports are very uh, important, especially in the decarbonization challenge, uh, because when we did our uh, joint analysis of CO2 emissions, we realized that the component of the uh, port operations that produce the highest level of CO2 is the ship at mooring. So what is cold ironing? Cold ironing means that when the ship comes to the pier, to the berth, she can switch off the motors and connect to electricity. This is the most simple way to explain what cold ironing is. So the reduction of CO2 production will be very, very high. So uh, we try to invest in cold ironing. We, uh, for, of course, have to make the studies. And who will benefit from this? This is the study from the port of Trieste. You can see on the map. The white part is the sea. You can see the piers of the port but you can see also the houses, the buildings of the citizens of Trieste. So first of all, we'll benefit from code ironing and for all these uh, pilot actions, the citizens of the uh, cities uh, near the ports, but uh, um, as I said at the beginning, pollution does not stop at borders, but also good and fresh air does not stop at borders. So the whole area at cross-border level will benefit uh, uh, from all of these pilot actions. Uh, the most important result that we achieve within SUSPORT is a cross-border result because the expected CO2 reduction in the future will be higher than 17,000 tons per year. This is a huge number for ports and uh, this number is a cross-border number because uh, we could achieve 17,000 because of the implementation of the pilot actions in all the ports of the program area in Italy and in Croatia because only one pilot action implemented in only one port will never reach this number. So this is a cross-border result. And uh, what's next? Uh, we are talking about ports, but we are people. We are a very good team. We were a very good team. We work very uh, well uh, together. So we decided to continue with this cooperation also after the project's end. And so as you can see, next week in Trieste, you are all invited to this uh, huge uh, cross-fertilization event. <laughs> we will sign a, a joint protocol for a permanent cross-border cooperation on sustainability and energy efficiency uh, regarding ports. So what does it mean? That we will continue with the joint uh, analysis and monitoring of CO2 emissions and with the harmonization of our policies and pilot actions. Because what we understood within SUSPORT is that common problems need common solutions. So we have to work uh, together, absolutely. So thank you. That's nice. <laughs> so whoever can to join you on 21st yes. in You're beautiful welcome. Trieste. You're welcome, all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And also the people that are listening us, because we have yes, an online of course, audience. Of course. If they would like to participate, why yes. not? As we said, now we are in the phase of a closure of these projects, which effects will be yeah. long-lasting. Yeah. So yes. thank you, Veronica, and let's see what do we have oh, in frame sports. Sure, you, you may. Yeah, ice cream. Yeah. Ah, ice cream. You can have this. Okay. Perfect. I, I prefer standing. Yes. So I can see if there is anybody which is sleeping because you cannot get the the lunch if you are asleep. Eh? So okay. thank you very much. So I will speak about the frame sport, which are speaking about small ports. So we, we listen about big ports, and now we are smaller, but we are many.
It's not about sport. Uh, sport. <laughs> no, it's not about sport, okay. but port. The, the problem is that the Adriatic, small ports uh, and marinas are facing a complex situation due to multiple factors. There are some way and somehow, somewhere, a surplus of supply compared to the demand, some other places not, maybe, increasing average of age of users, challenging economic and geomorphological situation. This is, these are sectorial problems. But the context is quite complex. The, the nautical tourism sector is just a niche of a larger uh, marine tourism, coastal tourism, which is very important for the Adriatic regions. There, there are issues uh, of uh, land and maritime special planning, where to put to what, and the, the mobility and the accessibility of this area are, are critical. So which are the solutions to these problems? The solutions are a better connection to the territory. So in this project, we look, we look at the project as a way for joining land, sea and land, land and sea, and uh, giving a better planning of this to both uh, administrations and uh, business operators for giving better quality to the final users, the tourist, the nautical tourists. But for this, uh, we need a new business model, measure, measures and action that can boost the Adriatic small port overall efficiency. If we want to develop, of course, we must be sustainable, but we must be also a bit more smart than before. And the connection with the territory is, is the key. Click. Oh, this one. Okay. So the object, objective is to improve the efficiency of the uh, small, Adriatic small port, making them more connected to each other, more sustainable, more technological, more safe. The action. Uh, in order to uh, improve the connectivity, we have uh, to make access to the information. To uh, the management system of the ports, uh, one by one, uh, is not so much efficient. So we have uh, to give tools to the business operator in order to increase their efficiency. We have uh, to, we are in front of a very fragmented sector. Many actors uh, working each for uh, per se. So we have uh, to collect, but also to standardize data. Each marina has its own website, but the information in the, all these sites are different. And then, after collecting, we have to spread the information and knowledge. What we did in the project? We did uh, three main things. Uh, some pilot actions. One size does not fit all, but we have to test many sizes <laughs> of, this, of, of the shoes. So, 25 pilot actions in, in the 15 partners' uh, location, uh, around three, five main micro teams, environment and energy, ICT application, special planning and management, training and knowledge access, business-oriented access. We, we did some practical tools, so we will see them in a moment, application, software, innovative monitoring systems, with a real impact on their territory. We must be concrete, we were told by the managing authority. We try to be. We mainly, one of the most important result is an a ICT platform, a website, a portal, what you, what you call frameswork.eu, which is able to collect and systemizing all the key data on the Adriatic small ports and the innovative IT tools. You may find them, so the tools, the pilot action are useful only if they, you can replicate them, otherwise they simply is a distribution of money. So we, we tried in these three colored elements, uh, you see the tools, uh, and we, we provide a tool for accessing them the, in order to be uh, like a guideline for replicating the pilot actions. And uh, finally, uh, the long-term strategy, which is addressed to both uh, the business operator, to the administration, in order to improve uh, uh, which can be the, co co the coherence of the strategy. Because, uh, again, if everybody goes uh, in, a, in what they feel to be the best solution, uh, at the end, uh, they, they, they will stay, they will stay um, in the same place. So, concerning the sustainable growth uh, sector, the, the action are uh, concentrated in uh, many things uh, of different kind. So, the, the one it was the planning, it was the 
the Rimini port, uh, which are for the planning for a better, for improving the access to the, to the port, to the marina, with more green, more green, et cetera, et cetera. We have also some tools for connecting better the territory, of course, in a sustainable way. Therefore, bikes, electric bikes, and electric buses, for in order to give the, the tourists the possibility after uh, the approaching the marina to go in the, in the inland. We, we did also some uh, um, capacity building in uh, uh, very successful, actually. I was yesterday with the president of the uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia region in uh, Monfalcone, where we had uh, a number of uh, training. 600 people participated for the, the rediscovering the artisanal way, Maestri Dasha. I don't know which is the English for, but uh, it's the way uh, the carver or the, the craftsman for, for the, using the, the tech, all the technical, all the old technique with the new technologies. Tools for the marinas and also for collecting. I don't know if the video will start. Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> A tool for, connect, for collecting uh, waste and plastic uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the marina. This will uh, a robot, okay? The, the, the business development, the information is key. So what uh, the, the portal, Frames for Portal, is providing basic information that was uh, sparse in a different way, not uh, rationalized. You know what you can get in each marina because you, you will find the same information updated. And this was considered very important for the, from the business operator because they, the, the competition is uh, something that uh, is, uh, is good for everybody if uh, you can learn from the other, if you know what is happening. So you can compete if you, if you know. Um, we help the uh, system management. In some action, also some uh, documents for master plan were done. We improve uh, with the technology, the, the surveillance and monitoring system, but also helping to know whether a birth is, is free or not. So allowing the, the final user to understand that there is places where I am, or in the portal that I can go. The Finance Portal, at the end, I've underlined again, is a multi-tool for networking. It's available on the website, and is also a way for accessing all this information and also on, on concerning the best practices. The strategy, long term. Uh, we would like uh, that these ports are more connected, uh, green, technological, safe, and competitive. This is uh, the, uh, these elements have been collected in a methodology for, for, for setting up a possible strategy, which is addressed to both uh, the, the business operator, but also the administration, which uh, the territory would like to help the development of this kind of nautical tourism. So we collect data, we, we listen to the stakeholder input uh, in the different way. The listening is, was basic since the beginning, not only at the end, and, but at the end we collect this in, in, a, in a coherent design. So pilot project, demand and offer analysis, key directing documents. There are eight areas of intervention, tourism, transition, culture, climate change, Governance, landscape and heritage, water and cost, and transport. These uh, strategy action can be accessed via a tool, a toolbox, with three macro topics. So if you are interested in one of these, you can see which kind of action the strategy proposes. And the, the nice thing is that there is the coherence, I stress it again. Looking forward, we are not switching off the portal after the end of the project. This is the main issue. Huh? because it must be useful. Otherwise, I mean, we, 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 it was beautiful, but uh, expired. The, we will keep updated the, the portal because of the, the updation uh, through the, some uh, commitment with the stakeholders. We are now, they signed a letter. They, we will update our information. And this will be done not only, it is not only the project partners, of course the project partners, but also the stakeholder association. And they are quite important. There are national stakeholder associations that are participating in this. So the, there is a, the life continue after the end. Uh, the, the teamwork was nice, nice people. 15 uh, project partners. We involved also the associated partners, including regions, municipalities, and private companies. 
Thank you for your attention. Almost Thank you. Minutes. Thank you, Prepaolo. Um, if I knew before about your work that has been done, I think, afterwards, because last, last summer I had a question of a friend of mine, uh, Italian, that said, uh, we would like to go around split, not really split, but around, do you, do you know which are the ports that offer certain kind of services? And I was like, no, of course, I will inform, but I don't know, <laughs> like that, at least uh, these, they are a little bit, uh, far from, from Split Center. And uh, if I knew, I could say, look at that. <laughs> Summer, you have a frame sport. Frame sport you, can dot go and you. See. Yes. you can go and see. These information yes. are updated. I mean, it is key, of course, to continue this effort. And uh, I believe that the value of this strategic project was exactly in this. So we, the results are maintained. So it are continuously on time. It's not just uh, two years of games. Uh, we did it. We enjoy a lot. However, the important is, are the results, and that, here the results is, is tangible and must continue in the future. This is the will of the administration that we work for. That's good, and uh, I hope that it will be promoted also in uh, in correct manner uh, further on among uh, all the. No, no, uh, I would like just to, to, to mention this yes. because it was yesterday. We have our final event in Venice during the Nautical mm -hmm. Show with a large number of people, but there were also some number of uh, regional final conference. In the last one, which occurred yesterday in Friuli, Venezia Giulia, also the president of the region, uh, was uh, Federica, was present. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this event, also thanks to this president, was, uh, I was in the TV, the regional TV, uh, so the newspaper. So there is a lot of attention. There are some territories that are more attentive to the other because, again, Nautical tourism is a niche, but it's a very precious niche. It's like the salt over, over a steak. If you, the steak without salt is not so good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Perfalo. Again, um, we have the, the very last and the quickest <laughs> project, uh, Mimosa. Uh, it's 11th project uh, and the, the last one. Unfortunately, uh, project partners couldn't be today with us because they programmed and planned uh, their final conference in Opatia. So, but they have asked me to present their journey uh, with a short video that they have produced especially for today, for you, for our audience, in order to present themselves and them, their achievements. And they said, uh, uh, tell to the audience this, that we were before, uh, 50 individuals not knowing each other and like a complete strangers and now we are very uh, a big and strong community and we will continue to work together so we say hello and goodbye to <laughs> Mimosa project and uh, you will see a little bit more with their creative video now thank you
thanks. Thanks to Mimosa, I think um, that we can say, however, that um, our area is better today than it was seven years before. So, uh, what I can say that uh, I thank to all the projects on, and all your patience uh, on the preparatory phase uh, to prepare everything uh, to be showcased uh, at, at best. Uh, to the audience, both of the program and the project, uh, and to you also today, and I give the word to my colleague uh, and moderator. Uh, thank you, thank you all, thank uh, to all participants of both sessions, it was very interesting and inspiring. Uh, we have collected uh, all uh, the results of the previous programming period and we made a short video that we will present you now. Uh, and the second one will be uh, the video of the strategic project. So all our joint efforts and joint results will be shown uh, now in these two videos. Please be patient and uh, see this and that will be a good introduction also to the next, uh, the last session. Thank you. Two countries, one coast. The longest maritime border connecting Italy and Croatia. A thriving area rich in opportunities to protect, strengthen and improve. This is where the Italy-Croatia 2014-2020 CBC program comes in. With the goal of strengthening cooperation between the two European member states' territories overlooking the Adriatic Sea. Since 2015, the program has brought its mission to life, increasing prosperity and blue growth potential by encouraging cross-border cooperation. With the total budget of 236.8 million euros, the program has allowed more than 800 regional and local stakeholders to exchange knowledge and experiences, develop and implement pilot action products and services, support investments with the goal of improving the quality of life of more than 12.4 million citizens. During 2014-2020, the program has financed 92 projects, achieving remarkable results in its policy areas. Funded projects develop digital tools for data collection and monitoring of environmental issues like water pollution or endangered marine species and e-platforms for the management of tourist flows and the planning of sustainable itineraries. Agreements and strategies were released for climate change adaptation and marine and coastal management, leading to safer and better managed territories. In terms of investments, information and tourist centers, innovation hubs and co-working spaces in port areas were built or renovated. Also, interventions to improve accessibility for the elderly and for people with disabilities to cultural and natural heritage sites were carried out. And even more, some projects developed power supply infrastructures and tested electric and multimodal means of transportation, as well as technical equipment for water and marine litter management and for the fishery sector. Other projects were particularly engaged in awareness raising towards the topics of the program and were able to address students and young people developing training courses and educational materials. Also, school mobility and traineeship opportunities. A collaboration that grows and develops day by day while looking to the future. Interreg Italy Croatia from shared resources to joint solutions.
so I hope you like it. I would like uh, also to thank uh, to all colleagues and our cooperators who, who participated in creation of this video. Uh, videos and now I would like to invite our last uh, speakers, uh, the panelists of the last discussion. Please join uh, me here. Just take a seat, please. I will give a brief introduction into our last session uh, where we will try to tackle and discuss uh, the, two, the two biggest novelties in our new programming period, which is related to all uh, interreg programs. Uh, firstly, the macro-regional strategies, which are now more uh, explicitly embedded uh, into the interreg programs as well as the uh, importance of synergies among the programs, so cooperation and cooperation and again cooperation. Uh, secondly, uh, the regulatory framework introduced a uh, new feature uh, into the programming uh, across the EU, so-called uh, operation of strategic importance. We call them OSI. <laughs> uh, but uh, the CPR says that operations of strategic importance are operations that provide significant contributions to the achievement of the objectives of a program and which are subject to particular monitoring and communication measures. The, com the Commission on purpose uh, didn't uh, provide a unique uh, methodology tool uh, to select uh, op uh, operation of strategic importance leaving the freedom to programs to select uh, the most appropriate uh, uh, methodology. And uh, mm, this maybe is the biggest challenge uh, to the programs. So with our guests, uh, we will talk about these uh, different approaches, but also about their experience uh, and expectation from um, uh, the upcoming uh, period and uh, these opportunities. So I'm pleased to welcome the participants of the panel. Uh, first, uh, with us, uh, was with us to, uh, this morning, but is also again with us, uh, Mr. Olivier Baudelaire from European Com Commission DG Region. Uh, with us is uh, Mrs. Battistina Kuguzi, a uh, member of the USA Governing Bar Board, I think online, yeah. Uh, Mrs. Laura Comelli from a uh, program Interreg Italy Slovenia, also online. Uh, Mrs., uh, Mr. Ludovico Gerardi from Interreg uh, IPA Adrian program. And uh, Mr. Mauro Novello from Interreg South Adriatic program. And last, not least, <laughs> Mrs. Anna Flavia Zucon from Interreg Italy Croatia program. As you can see, we have gathered relevant representatives from all the Mediterranean areas, but also representatives from European Commission. And uh, maybe uh, we can start with, uh, um, with uh, Mr. Baudelaire from the European Commission. And um, I will ask you, can you tell us what is the Commission's vision and uh, which are the expectations towards these two novelties, novelties in the implementation of interreg programs? What do you see as possibilities for synergies in the Mediterranean area? Mr. Baudelaire? Yes, I can. I can do that. <laughs> um, indeed, huh? as you said, uh, in the new programming period, 21-27, uh, we have proposed the operations of strategic importance, um, and basically, um, it's compulsory. Huh? So uh, it, every program has a, a list of these operations of strategic importance. Uh, indeed, we haven't defined it, huh? because that's our new policy to say we have regulations, and um, that's the law, basically, and we cannot, in the Commission, add something to the law. So it's for all the programs to, in a sense, um, decide how to do it. Um, and in a sense, uh, we hope that the programs appreciate that flexibility huh? because uh, <laughs> very often people say, oh, there's too much guidance from Brussels. So it, it's rather something that we wanted to be seen as uh, positively. Um, so the idea of the operations of strategic importance, the OC, as you say, um, there, there are four objectives from our point of view. Huh? The first one is really uh, basically when we approve the program to know what we are funding. Um, to know what are the key projects that we will get at the end, the flagship projects. Uh, and that's 
that's quite um, important to raise the profile of the program of Interreg and of what the EU does uh, on the ground. The second objective is, in a sense, to force the partners to think strategically. Uh, what do we want at the end? Because indeed, in the past, well, it's not always the case. Huh? It wasn't the case for the Italia-Croatia program. We, we just saw it. There were already some uh, strategic projects. But in many programs, and we have 86 of them, um, the program itself was just seen as a pot of money. So we say, okay, there is a lot of money available. Basically, these are the priorities. Do what you want or do what you can with it, and we will see at the end, but basically it's always fine. Uh, so the programs did some calls um, without any strategic thinking. They saw what came up. In, in the application, you always have good projects, and that's what was funded. Um, so at the end, at the time of uh, approving the project, we and the Commission, uh, we who provide the, the biggest share of the, of the co-financing, we basically didn't know exactly what we would get. And that's why uh, we wanted to uh, have a bit more of a top-down approach, uh, wh where right at the start you know what you have in the program. The third reason is, in a sense, to force the decision makers to make decisions. Um, that's their role. And it's easy to make calls and just to wait and see what comes up. But it's also useful to have a top-down approach. As policymaker, it's good to think about what you want to have in your region, what you want to get. And that's what we wanted to have with the operation of strategic importance, to force the people, the decision makers, to think about what they want to have with the EU funding. Um, the fourth reason is obviously to communicate on the results. There will be a specific uh, attention given to the communication on the results of the operation of strategic importance. That's good, of course, for the EU because then we can show that we do a useful thing. It's good for the, the program itself uh, and it's good for the regions who are part of the program. And we are glad that the program Italy-Croatia indeed has a clear and ambitious operation of strategic importance, which are following what happened in the past programming period. So, as I said, and that's trying to answer your second part of the question, um, the operation of strategic importance are important to build synergies and complementarities with other initiatives. And in this region, you have two main initiatives. The first one is the EU strategy for the Adriatic and Ionian region and the general uh, policy in the Mediterranean. Why are these OC useful for that? It's because you know right from the start what are your priorities, what you will do. So it's easier to, to plan ahead when you know exactly what you, what you will do. So uh, why should actually programs like Italy, Croatia, try to find synergies and complementarities. Um, well, first, in, in this area, the Adriatic and Ionian region and the Mediterranean, uh, cooperation, basically, it's a must, uh, because uh, both areas are functional areas, which really make sense, and both areas have a lot of potential and common potential. Uh, as we saw uh, earlier on with the projects that we uh, funded in the past, there is the environment, there is the climate change, there is the energy, there is the mar maritime transport, education, tourism, uh, and all that is very uh, particular to that region, and if you want to do it properly, uh, at some stage or another, you will have to cooperate with other parts. Um, Another reason to try to find synergies and complementarities is that in this region you already have a lot of things uh, happening. So um, if you want your thing, which is in this case the program to be useful, you need to uh, coordinate it with the other things happening. So in the Adriatic and Ionian region you have USAIR, of course. In the Mediterranean you have the Union for the Mediterranean, you have WestMed, and you also have 17 different interreg programs uh, working in that area for a total of 1.8 billion. So this is a huge amount and deserves cooperation, coordination. So that will be my last point. How to do it concretely? Uh, there are millions of ways to do it, but I will just uh, propose uh, four ways. 
The first one is to have a joint project. So you have different programs in the area which put money in a single pot to find one joint project which would have an impact on the whole area, be it the Adriatic Ionian region or be it the Mediterranean. Um, for example, if you want to improve the knowledge of biodiversity, you can have Italy, Croatia working in its own part, and Italy, France, Maritime working on its own part, and the other programs working on their part, and at the end of the day, you have a clear picture of the whole Mediterranean. The second option is to have coordinated projects. So that's a cluster of coherent projects funded by different programs in their area, uh, but with the same objective. Um, and here, um, you could indeed have a bigger impact. The third uh, possibility is to have a single project. So one program funds one project, which has an impact on the whole area. For example, if you, have, uh, if you want to fund a boat which will help to uh, fight uh, pollution, uh, one program can do that, but the boat can be used in the entire area. Of course, those who will use the boat, they will pay their fee uh, for the use of the boat, uh, otherwise it would be a bit unfair. And the fourth possibility is to capitalize on the projects, um, which means that every project has to be properly publicized and explained to inspire the other programs. Um, and in a sense, it's a way to reinve avoid reinventing the wheel um, each time. And all that, of course, implies that there are regular discuss discussions to be able to coordinate. And here, Italy, Croatia, as I said, is really a front runner in this work, uh, really linking its work to user and to what happens in the Mediterranean. Uh, as a conclusion, the key success factor for Interreg and for cooperation in general is the trust. It's the willingness to cooperate, and it's also a common vision. I mean, we should all go in the same uh, direction, fight against the negative aspects of climate change, protect the biodiversity, etc. And I will finish with a quote from our commissioner, the commissioner Ferreira, which said that in all crises and transformations, and of course we, we see it every day, we have many of them, um, there is no situation where the answer can be less cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baudelaire. This explanation can help but uh, also inspire programs to work uh, more closely to strive and to achieve more cooperation and more synergies approach uh, while working in the same geographical area. Uh, the collaboration is also a keyword of the EU strategy for the Adriatic and uh, Onion uh, region. I would like to invite uh, Ms. Mrs. Kuguzi, a member of the EUSAIR governing board from Italy, to illustrate the EUSAIR embedding process, both in the interreg and the national or regional uh, programs. Uh, Mr. Kuguzi, uh, could you please also introduce the Action Labs uh, initiative and its relation with operations of strategic importance? Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just, uh, just a clarification, so I, I am not uh, the official member, but I support the national coordinator in, uh, in the East participation in, in the user governing board. And uh, I will, um, I will, uh, I will um, I, I am presentation so that uh, can help me actually to, to show you, uh, to explain you uh, the process that we are talking about. Uh, and uh, the efforts that user is, uh, is doing in order to embed uh, the, the, its priority into, uh, into the different programs. Um, so I, um, just a little bit, uh, um, sorry. Okay. Um, so I, uh, as you know, uh, user, the, um, the uh, strategy for the uh, Adriatic and Union region uh, is not uh, as also as all the uh, macro regional strategy as not uh, own resources and uh, in order for the for its priority to be uh, funded, uh, the, it, the strategy needs uh, to rely on existing program. And this is one of the added value of the strategy that is to uh, combine to put together different sources in order to uh, improve strength and effectiveness. Uh, of the uh, audit funding. 
uh, to uh, around some um, key priority that are set on the by the by the strategy itself. Um, and this uh, uh, the embedding process is actually uh, this um, the, the process that can help the strategy to have this objective uh, to reach. And it is the embedding means uh, in practice uh, inclusion of user priorities into uh, the, uh, the program, into the relevant programming document. And this is the process that started in, 2009, in 2018. Um, by, um, by when the, uh, the, all the programming process started, uh, because we, we need to include uh, this priority since the very beginning, the very beginning of, uh, of the planning phase in the uh, in the strategic in all the strategic framework. And uh, it was with the uh, it started with the Catalan declaration and the declaration made by uh, the a, a ministerial declaration by the user of participating countries, but then was uh, actually uh, strengthened also by the political impulse of, by the European uh, Council uh, in 2020. And then we, uh, we have also a regulatory impulse by the common provision regulation, which actually uh, foresee for all the programs funded by the uh, cohesion programs, the uh, requirement to describe uh, the, uh, the way each program will contribute to the strategy and also uh, describe this, uh, this contribution for each specific objective of the, of the program. So uh, the first step of embedding uh, or user priorities is uh, um, concern alignment with the uh, user, uh, user um, objectives. And this is, uh, uh, and uh, this strategy has uh, identified in 2020 uh, flagships, meaning uh, coordinated actions, emblematic action and progress projects that can guide programs in, in this process. Because uh, this flagship uh, in total are, are, are 15 and are approved by the governing board, which is a decision making uh, body of the, of the strategy and are uh, meant to guide, uh, to, to guide uh, the embedding uh, the process and not rely only on the general strategic uh, plan that is the action plan of the strategy. Uh, but um, when it comes um, to uh, really translate uh, the flagship into the programming, then uh, we have uh, we, we we have uh, to uh, we, we have to make some reflection. So uh, it is uh, one thing is the uh, having uh, large priority, very strategic ones, and then uh, the uh, the main effort that has to be done is to translate this priority into the operational language of the programs. Meaning we need to uh, really understand how to include this priority into the program, how link this project, this priority to the, the specific objective, and also to how, to, which kind of action are in line with the flagship. And this is the process that we have been doing uh, in the programming phase uh, inside the monitoring committee for all the programs um, of the, all the European territorial cooperation uh, programs in which uh, Italy is uh, involved in. Um, and this, uh, uh, and what, uh, what, what we have achieved so far. So we, uh, we uh, achieved a very important result. So all the programs, uh, the European Territorial Cooperation Program for the area actually make reference to it there and also specify for each specific objective the contribution that it, uh, they will give to the regional strategy. But there are also programs that make the, a step further uh, they are, uh, which are tested uh, more advanced uh, uh, form of embedding. And uh, one of these programs is uh, for sure Italy Croatia program, to which, uh, is, uh, um, which has linked uh, the uh, operational strategic importance to the flagship. And we are uh, also experiencing uh, this, uh, uh, the, the, the way of operationalize these uh, linkages within uh, the working group uh, that are working on uh, the definition of, of the, uh, of the uh, operational strategic importance. And uh, the, the, first, uh, the first meeting that we had, uh, we had in the, within this working group of st saw the participation of the pillar coordinator of the strategy, and which explained the flagship, and this is actually the starting point for all the process. 
There are also other programs that uh, make an effort in this sense, and this is uh, the EPA South Asiatic program uh, that uh, actually links the operational strategic importance also to the, to the flagship, so defining, uh, uh, stating that um, one of the criteria to, to, work, uh, to define the project is to uh, the uh, consistency with the flagship of you there. Um, but we have also more uh, advanced, uh, uh, the, the most advanced uh, experience uh, so far is the one uh, uh, of the Italy Slovenia uh, program that put uh, uh, in the program, uh, so a, a, in the program, uh, a, a project that is a, a concretely inspired by, uh, by the user flagship. So, uh, in, uh, uh, and we will see later uh, with the intervention of the managing authority which kind of program we are talking about, what kind of project we are talking about. So we, um, embedding is not only related to the European Territorial Cooperation programs, but also to the uh, cohesion mainstream programs. And also in that case, we have made many, uh, many, uh, um, we, we achieved the significant results. Uh, so all the uh, programs, so the regional programs that are uh, in the, of the Adriatic Union area, uh, Italian ones, uh, make reference to you there. And ten programs actually especially um, make a, even a stronger effort by explicitly mention the flagship they uh, are going to focus on. Um, I listed uh, the, the, uh, the flagship in this case, uh, in this, uh, this slide, but I will go forward. Um, and this, uh, but uh, it is also important to consider that embedding does not start with the, uh, with the end of the programming phase, but uh, uh, embedding starts from um, continues uh, and it uh, uh, achieve a, a very important value uh, during the implementation of the programs. Uh, and this is uh, something that we have to bear in mind because this is also, we are, are going, we are still uh, in the process of testing approaches uh, and this, uh, uh, and we have to test, we have to understand how to better embed uh, a user into the, uh, during the implementation. For sure, one, one way is to an important way is to uh, embed uh, user into the call for proposal, and we uh, and uh, by defining uh, assessment criteria, by uh, by uh, um, giving additional score to those projects that uh, demonstrate to be in line with the flagship. Um, but another important aspect is to assure a dialogue between uh, the programs and user. They should uh, actually uh, not work as a, in parallel, but should uh, actually uh, work together in order to have this embedding uh, really uh, to achieve a significant result. Um, and we have been working um, a lot on this, uh, on this issue, and I will stay in later with the, with the work of the actual lab. But we, we, um, another part, another, another aspect of the embedding uh, is about uh, coordinating uh, the um, a foster coordination among uh, the interact programs, and not only among the interact programs, but also among the, all the programs that will contribute to the strategy. And it is uh, something that uh, we have been uh, working as uh, Italy in, in the frame of by uh, to the uh, to the coordination to the user coordination, um, uh, uh, but also with the uh, MAC region, which is a partner of the um, facility point, uh, the uh, user um, supporting governance uh, project. Um, so we have been um, uh, we we have organized several events. Uh, which were uh, considered, uh, which were a sort of a focus group, uh, working groups, which, which involved all the programs of the area, and they were met in uh, were met actually uh, with the in, we organized with the intention uh, to uh, understand how complementarity, how can we uh, pass from complementarity uh, to, to synergies among the programs during this uh, programming framework. And uh, how really concrete um, concrete collaboration can be can be established in the framework of user. We even launched uh, in last uh, in April 2022 uh, a network of uh, European Territorial Cooperation Managing Authority, uh, and this network is meant to uh, to begin to to continue uh, its activities also in uh, in the future. 
Um, it, this is a, a slide that actually show, uh, shows uh, um, the uh, type of complementarities that exist um, in, uh, in the Adriatic Union area between the different programs of the, uh, of the area. Uh, and this, uh, this is a result of uh, one of the activities we carried out during the, uh, during the action lab, starting from a single flagship. We identified all the actions that were in line with the flagships in, uh, and also we identified uh, the possible complementarities among the programs that uh, should be considered as a starting point for future synergies. So I will... Um, I will uh, stop uh, here just uh, with uh, some key, uh, key uh, reflection. Uh, so how, um, how we saw during this that in now, so in bending process encompasses all the programming phase, so it is very important to continue uh, to, you know, to, uh, to test uh, approaches during the implementation phase. And this represents actually a learning by doing process, but we cannot do it without by um, within the program themselves. But we need to establish this dialogue between user governance actors and uh, the, uh, the program bodies. And uh, we cannot uh, also think about embedding also uh, only on, on the basis of uh, uh, single program implementation, but we need uh, to, to foster synergies and to foster collaboration as also a representative of the European Commission was uh, saying before me. So I thank you for the attention. I remain at your disposal in case of questions. Thank you, Mrs. Kugosi. We all have been following your presentation very carefully, our beneficiaries, but also our programs. Uh, we know that uh, programs were free to decide uh, about the, their methodologies for um, the selection of operations of strategic importance. So some uh, programs chose uh, the top-down approach, uh, some um, bottom-up approach, some uh, addressing multi-objectives uh, or multi-priorities, while some programs choose to capitalization of previous results uh, as a starting point. Um, mm, we have uh, with us online uh, Mrs. Komeli uh, from uh, Interreg Italy Slovenia program. Mrs. Komeli, can you please uh, tell us more about uh, Interreg Italy Slovenia program approach towards the operation of strategic importance? Can you please also illustrate the type of operations of the strategic importance foreseen in your program? Yes, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Thanks to the, uh, my colleague and friend, uh, Flavia, and to all colleagues uh, uh, that are there in uh, Ferrara, sitting in this uh, nice place, um, round table. So a big hug to everybody. I'm sorry not to, not to be able to, to join uh, the event in presence, but anyhow, I'm sure that we will have other uh, opportunities in the in the future. We have we will have a long way through the <laughs> through the conclusion of this uh, 17, uh, 21, 27 programming period. So uh, lots of occasion uh, are are still are still um, available. Uh, well, I will just um, following the. Um, uh, the speeches uh, done by uh, Monsieur Baudelet from the Commission and the, and the representative of the Italian national level for the coordination of the um, uh, macro regional strategies, Ms. Um, Kouzi, I just uh, complement a few, uh, few elements from. from for the uh, participants. Um, for the programming period of 21-27, the, in, the Inter-Italy Inter Slovenia uh, task force um, decided uh, to, to make an extra effort um, to tackle the topics of uh, the strategic uh, projects uh, since the, the beginning. So this was the, their starting point. So the first uh, analysis was uh, um, related to the strategic approaches uh, that were much important, most important for the uh, two member states participating to the program, uh, Slovenia and Italy. 
And then, um, as uh, uh, the, the, the other point was uh, related to the uh, effect of the pandemic and how to um, uh, tackle the point also using uh, these impact funds. So uh, those are the um, uh, starting points for the reflection of the uh, programming task force. Uh, and the debate was uh, very long, so they decided to, um, to make this approach top-down, um, but in the um, largest way possible. And after six months of discussion and analysis uh, with the support of our technical assistance, they were able to define the three main strategic projects. Uh, the first um, was uh, the one mentioned by Battistina Cucuzzi uh, five minutes ago, and this is uh, a project uh, that is embedding the EUSR strategy, and this is uh, Avio Cycle Tour, um, a project um, I th I'm quite sure that uh, will, uh, will be one of the, uh, of the projects that will be developed along this uh, long way uh, postal uh, cycle route um, that uh, cross almost all user uh, countries. So this is uh, a, a very very important project, not only for Inter Italy, Slovenia, but for all the macro regional uh, uh, area. Uh, the second was related to uh, our uh, crust area. You know that. Um, uh, crust is a classical crust is a, one of the uh, most important topic of analysis uh, worldwide, and we uh, in the, our cross uh, border area have uh, more than 220 kilometers um, of uh, crust um, uh, territory, uh, where there are a lot of small municipalities that are willing to work together. Um, even joining an GCT, so this is a the second strategic project devoted to the cast area, um, not only uh, devoted for the, uh, for the preservation of the habitat, but also for, the, um, uh, for trying to avoid uh, the, uh, the poverty of the, those uh, territories uh, uh, in which um, uh, services, public services, are not uh, so uh, so much available. Uh, also, the economy uh, is uh, not so florid. Um, also, for the cli climate change. So there are lots of uh, lots of uh, challenges that this project uh, uh, will tackle. And the third, but it's the third, just because I mentioned third, but it's, um, uh, strategic as the, the two before mentioned is Poseidone. This is the acronym. Um, of one project, uh, one strategic project that is um, uh, um, linked to, um, uh, to two uh, main topics of the area. The coastal preservation, um, the uh, management of the touristic flows, um, having in mind that uh, the coastal zones um, are uh, uh, also linked to uh, very hard, uh, uh, very strong phen phenomena of uh, um, uh, linked to the uh, tourist uh, flows. More than uh, uh, I heard um, that uh, uh, tourist touristic flows uh, almost doubled uh, after the pandemic, and this was uh, uh, of course linked to the fact uh, that people. Uh, uh, are, uh, are not willing to travel um, outside Europe, more or less, and this uh, also caused um, a, great, a, great, a great impact. And also for, for this project, uh, um, there are um, very important elements um, uh, at, uh, I, I have I can say at the international level because uh, they are trying to also preserve um, the uh, the species, uh, both um, flora and uh, fauna, uh, for um, linked to the to the 
uh, north side of the Adriatic. Um, uh, the turtle, uh, you know, the turtle, we have the turtle Caretta Caretta, and we have also the dolphin. Um, we have um, uh, lots of cases where such uh, animals are, um, uh, uh, are, in, 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 are jeopardized uh, by, uh, by the environment. Uh, so we are trying also to preserve those uh, uh, very important animals for, for our um, common, uh, and common future. So those are the three uh, strategic projects, uh, the approach um, top-down, the amount devoted uh, was the same, um, uh, the, and also the duration is the same. Uh, both the three projects um, have already had their kickoff meetings, uh, the, the last was on Monday uh, in Venice, uh, and they are uh, all uh, already contracted. And 36 months to see uh, what, uh, what they will be able to, to do. Uh, we are uh, absolutely sure that the results will be uh, very important um, and will be um, also a, the basis for other uh, projects, uh, maybe uh, based on, their capital, on the capitalization of their results. This is uh, for for what concerns the current uh, programming field. Uh, I don't. I think that we are somehow in a late uh, with the program, so I, I don't know if you have other questions for me. No, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Comelli. I think uh, your experience was valuable, and uh, wish you a, a successful implementation. And thank next you. time, hopefully, we will have you also in person here. Uh, yeah. Now let's move to next uh, program, uh, wider area, uh, IPA Adria, Adria uh, program, uh, which um, foreseen operation of strategic importance uh, with the aim of implementing LSA. Yes. Uh, Mr. Gerardi, no? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell us, please, uh, how you in Ipadrion and uh, within the operation of strategic importance uh, intend to support and coordinate cooperation uh, among different interreg programs, including EUSAIR area? Yes, but not only including EUSAIR area, if I can, because I start from the second question, because yesterday I was in Sarajevo in video conference. Uh, to speak in a meeting with uh, my colleague of uh, Euromed and Danube program because uh, asked exactly the same thing. How can we cooperate to have a, a, a common development of the three projects? Why? Because any each territory have the need to have a certain that the different, uh, the different programs from the different funds cooperate together because now, and uh, I have to remember to you that we are in the fourth period of implementation of Interreg. Now, the stakeholders, the applicants, are really skilled and know very well what they have to do to achieve the target of their strategy to development of the territory. How can I use the different funds? The first is inside of the cooperation, territorial cooperation, the stakeholder wanna to, to understand how can they do to, to achieve their goal using the different program in a shared way, in a common way, in a common framework. I started from this because I believe that also the Commission have this need to have the certain that in this uh, <laughs> Okay, spaghetti ball, because there are a lot of programs that insist that together in the same area, there is a real synergy. Okay, this is the first. Not only in, the, in one functional area, but in a broader area in where are active projects. Another thing that I have, and I finish with this first part, that I have to take in consideration is, in the reality, 
at the project level, this cooperation between projects developed in different programs are now, exist, because partners work in different programs and for sure try to go in one or two directions, not uh, try to propose everything, propose the thing that they wanted to develop and use different programs. And I believe that the easier way to cooperate between programs is at the project level. Try to uh, give the possibility to project developers in different programs to share their results and to increase the network. This is the first consideration that I have to do. Now I cross to the first question. Okay, our operation of strategic importance, okay, I believe that it is really top-down. Uh, uh, we use a really top-down approach because it is also up on us because we have to uh, guarantee the assistance to the USI strategy. We are one of the four programs that have this, uh, this obligation. We have to ensure this. For this reason, inside of our Interreg program, we uh, put and we try to define better the projects that are useful for the strategy. Why? Because in 2014-2020 uh, programming period, uh, we, um, we put and we help the strategy with a unique strategic project, but the result of this unique strategic project were not, was not so good. And then we divide in this programming period in three projects. But not because uh, um, we exchange the goal. The goal is the same. Now, with the experience of the last programming period, we try to better define the action and divide the responsibility to carry on the project to different lead partners. This, this, is, this was our unique aims. Now we are in the phase of the discussion, and I, I see now Stella uh, from Croatia. Uh, on Monday, we will be in, in uh, Zagreb in order to discuss, uh, to try to find a compromise. Sorry, I use the term compromise because in the reality there is also a... a a sort of political balancement between projects and projects, but we try to define better the three projects that we have to approve. Not we have to approve, not me as a, a, a managing authority, of course, but the monitoring committee have to approve, and this project has to start on the 1st of September of this year to maintain a continuity for the, um, for, for the USAI strategy. And where are the problems? The problems are problem of money and problem of better define the single action inside of this project. But the thing that I want to underline to close this, uh, <laughs> these few words are that uh, in Zagreb on Monday, we will have a meeting with the governing board of Azair because the project have a specific stakeholder. The stakeholder is the Uzair. And for this reason, we have to found a better way and a better agreed way with the governing board of Uzair. I hope that the two numbers, zero, zero, are, uh, are right, and I close my... <laughs> few words. Thank you a lot. Also because I'm hungry, but um, this is another thing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gerardi. Uh, it sounds challenging, but we are looking forward to cooperation. <laughs> um, now uh, we move to another um, program, new name, same countries. Uh, isn't it, Mr. Novello? Yes. <laughs> Italy, Albania and Montenegro or IPA South Adriatic. Uh, we heard you are about to approve and, uh, approve and launch your uh, operation of strategic importance. Uh, what was your approach towards them and uh, what were their main features? 
So thank you very much uh, for the question, but also thank you very much for inviting us. It's a great pleasure to be here with you. Uh, and uh, yes, we are about to close this process. We have started uh, two years ago, so it was a very long process to develop the uh, strategic project. Uh, we have set up uh, in our program already the uh, topics, uh, so we knew the topics uh, from the very beginning. Nevertheless, uh, the process was difficult. And we had even uh, experts helping the project partners that were identified. But uh, it was anyway difficult, and I will explain why. So the two main characteristics of, of our strategic project is that they are top-down and they are big. So the first one means that uh, the partners were selected by the monitoring committee, meaning if you select five topics, you know which are the uh, national and regional authorities that have to, to work on those topics because it's their own competence. So you have powerful uh, partners that can make a difference in this topic. You have a big political backup, I want to stress this, and you have, uh, as a program, recognition from decision makers. This is, uh, for me, very important in the strategic project that we have. Um, uh, yeah, exactly these, but also, of course, uh, we want the projects to really capitalize on the 1420 period, so we don't want to start from scratch. We had already strategic projects, and we want to learn from them. We want the projects to really contribute to the EUSAIR, so we force them to contact the EUSAIR uh, bodies, uh, like the governance board, etc. We ask them to contact them and to make meetings with them to really address uh, the EUSAIR topics. And also, at national and regional level, with the programs, uh, regional programs, we want uh, that there is uh, some, uh, some exchange, and we ask them to explain how this exchange takes place. The second big characteristic is the being wide, so they are big, they, have a, uh, they are expected to have a lot of impacts, they have big investments, four to six millions for us is big investment, for a regional program is nothing, it's peanuts, but for us is a big investment, uh, and also they are long in terms of duration, four to seven, six to seven years duration. So are we happy with what we have? Uh, I have to say, yes, we are happy because uh, the partners managed to, uh, uh, to identify investment, local investment mainly. So we push them uh, to think out of the box and say, okay, with this local investment, what do you want to reach at uh, cross-border level? This is also very important that you ask, okay, you want this, but what does it mean for the cross-border area? This is very important. Uh, 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 mentality change that we want to, to also bring forward. Then we learned that the partners are very important. They are powerful partners because they are ministries, regional authorities, uh, but sometimes the respons responsiveness of partners was not completely there, meaning it was top-down, we decided the partners, but they didn't react because they were not uh, so interested at the end. But for us, it is also a learning process. So these crucial partners have to learn to cooperate because it is for the benefit of the cross-border area. So this is, uh, for us, included in the package. Um, then the fact that they are very long, seven years, uh, it means uh, they will change. So it is clearly pandemics, uh, a war, something can happen within seven years. So you have to provide flexibility to them to adapt to the circumstances. So what we did was, for instance, with our thematic projects in this period, we gave them the possibility to change even the investments where there is a need. So they can also identify new investments that are key for the region and uh, they contribute to the project objective. So without changing the project objectives. Something that uh, I think uh, is a uh, lesson learned. Uh, so at the end, to conclude, my advice is uh, give sufficient time to partners to discuss, to meet in person, not online, in person, discuss, understand what all partners want, and provide sufficient flexibility to adapt to the external circumstances which can change in seven years' time. So thank you very much.
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Novell. As you said, lessons learned. We will, we will learn from your experience as you are actually the first program to start this process. Um, we have just heard that uh, IPA South Adriatic and ITA Slovenia programs have already started the selection procedures for their operations of strategic importance. But let's see what is the state of play of Italy-Croatia program. Mr. Mrs. Zucon, the floor is yours. Thank you, Renata. Um, I would like to spend some, a few words about uh, why we are here together. <laughs> we are a networking among the uh, integrated programs uh, existing in this Adriatic and Ionian uh, area. Um, and we would like to, um, of course, join our efforts to be uh, in synergies and to to be absolutely uh, towards the EU's um, strategy and to put it uh, in a concrete uh, way at transnational level and in cross-border level in different way, of course. So um, what we did, <laughs> drafting our IP, uh, we decided with the task force uh, uh, during uh, the programming phase to take uh, this new opportunity from the regulation for two different kinds of uh, OZ uh, categories. One of them is really a um, novelty for our program. We have um, a kind of brave heart. <laughs> so we uh, wish to put in place uh, an SMEs uh, facility instrument and this is a novelty for our, for our program. We want to target this facility uh, to blue economy, which is our uh, slogan, is the slogan of the program. And we would like to support uh, them in their uh, growth, in their development towards innovation, blue innovation, and uh, for reinforcing the skill. Mm. We are thinking about uh, some grant scheme, some maybe other instruments such as voucher, but we are ongoing. We are not so uh, advanced as IPA, South Adriatic program is. The other kind, the other category of uh, OZI uh, project is more devoted, I mean, to the user flagship. Um, we will take into account the theme, the items that this flagship uh, decided uh, together with the TSG uh, pillar. So we would like to embed the strategy even if we are a cross-border cooperation uh, program. And uh, we will use these flagships uh, as a framework for our uh, priority two, three, and four. Not for ISO priority, but for uh, these. I think that we have a lot of inputs uh, from flagships. Mm, what is the selection procedure? <laughs> uh, we don't have till now, of course. Yeah, yeah. but uh, can you explain us uh, the approach and the methodology yeah. uh, in the, uh, for the selection of operation of strategic yeah. importers? We set up a working group, um, which is uh, inside uh, the program area. Uh, we have the representative at national, regional, and local level from Italy and Croatia. And uh, we have also uh, support from external experts, which are experts for each of a specific objective. And uh, we would like also, but we already done some steps, to be in contact with the um, expert of the pillars. So the embedding phase uh, during uh, the development, the generation of our OSI, will be also uh, reached the, by the involvement of Pillar during the programming phase. What we uh, ask to the external expert, we would like for them, till the end of this year, this is anyway a challenging <laughs> effort for the program because we are in the closing uh, phase for 
1420 and uh, in the uh, concrete phase of 2001-2007, we already uh, launched two calls for small and, st and standard projects in this year. Uh, but what we uh, want from them till the end of this year, some uh, schemes with theme description, object clear description, macro activities, possible output indicators of this OSI, of course, in the framework of our indicator, program indicators, which kind of partner uh, has to be involved in these uh, OSI projects, and above all, uh, what is the cross-border dimension in embedding a microstrategy at cross-border level. So also the uh, effort from the expert is mm, <laughs> really challenging, but uh, we already start with uh, one mm, general plenary uh, session with the pillars meeting, and uh, we have also another one meeting for each of our specific objectives with each of these uh, experts. So the working group uh, is working, <laughs> and uh, we hope, we do hope uh, to be in line with your suggestion <laughs> at the beginning of this uh, session. Thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Ocon. The hard work is front of us, yes. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you all participants. Um, I will just ask uh, Mrs. Zucon to, to remain here, okay? Um, I hope that uh, all the day was very useful for, for, for you and you find it uh, beneficial for your future projects and partnerships. But I will give a, a floor to Mr. Zucon to wrap up the session and to, <laughs> to greet us all, yeah. You have. So, uh, it's even enough late, uh, and we are hungry. That's a lot of it. So, um, again, uh, just a few words. Uh, coming from uh, the, uh, our 11 standard, uh, strategic projects, sorry. I uh, take into account some key words uh, from them. Continuity uh, in the uh, result. Uh, so, I'm very glad to hear from them that some um, pilot action and some results will be continued uh, by their own without uh, uh, other um, internal project or maybe also with other with further project, but above all from their own. So this is really a key word, and I'm very glad for their long commitment. Other keywords is that one pilot action uh, made by Interreg can stimulate other investments in the place. So this is real, a concrete uh, result for Interreg that you know usually is named, uh, is called as a kind of soft program. But we have demonstrated this morning that we can be also physical. <laughs> Uh, in the meantime, anyway, cross-border. So we are very proud, proud. Make synergies among other projects and among other funds, as fisheries fund or uh, research fund. So um, also this is a very good result. A replication of uh, the experience of this project is and other keywords because for the next OSI, we would like also to capitalize uh, the good, uh, the good result of the current strategic, the closing strategic project of this uh, period. A lot of the new uh, specific objectives are dealing with uh, the item, the aim of our strategic uh, project, so we can give to them some continuity, uh, we are confident. The enthusiasm mm -hmm. <laughs> of the people working uh, with this strategic, uh, but also with the standard, uh, we can say very sincerely, uh, is really good food 
for uh, the managing uh, bodies of the program for the day, yes, because this is in a great part, in a large part, a result of the work, daily work of the JS towards the partnership toward the people who work in projects and uh, could be energetic for our new program. So please be ready for the new call for the new strategic uh, project. We would like to see you again. Thank you again, thank you all, have a nice day and very many good projects. <laughs>